Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting on Wednesday, January 24th, 2018. Um, this meeting is recorded and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, we have minutes of the last of our meeting um, from January 10th. Make a motion to approve the minutes from January 10th. I'll second the motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, Selectman's announcements. Uh, Trevor, do you want to just update us on the MMA meeting? Sure. Um, Carol and I went out to the MMA meeting, which is the Massachusetts Municipal Association. It's their gathering they have. Um, every year out in Boston where all communities get together and selectmen and council members, mayors, um, all get together and have um, classes for, uh, for two days, uh, a lot of workshops and a lot of um, collaboration between, um, between different towns. So it was, a, it was really, I love going because I guess I'm, you know, obviously new at this and you've been many years, but, uh, but it's, fun to, it's fun to get out and talk with other people who are doing your job in different towns and um, for our job in different towns and see what they're, what problems they're working on and what successes they've had in different areas. Um, and uh, we, they had some great workshops. I attended, um, just to kind of give you the list of the different things that I worked with. Um, they also have a trade show, which is great because they have vendors from all over, um, you know, all over that, that work with local towns and, and cities to, um, help better them and and um, they have all, all, all kinds of things to look at there so um, so that was that was interesting and fun to, fun to go to um, one of the one of the sessions that we went to was on the new marijuana law um, that that was a packed room people sitting on the floor there were um, there were ways uh, for for uh, forward for municipalities the as we all know the the um, con uh, CCC, the committee is getting together and writing regs, and we had a lot of um, a lot of good information coming out. There's still a lot of stuff up in the air, but um, it's important to get a couple of the bylaws on our books so that we can collect tax um, and get paid for some of the services that we're going to need to provide if we have any in our town, and to regulate um, the different businesses, whether they be you know whatever type of business. Um, Growing, transportation, selling, all, all kinds of different aspects of that, of that trade, and um, and how it related to the you know federal laws. Um, so, do you want to add anything on that marijuana? Well, other than I just mentioned, the FERCOG is having a um, a meeting where the um, commission, Cannabis Control Commission, is coming out on February sixth to Franklin County Regional Governments in Greenfield on February sixth to kind of update us more on on their leanings and where they are with their regulations. They have a draft regulations out, but they're still working on other items. And then the planning board is also has a meeting Monday, I think the 5th. So did you want to add anything on the marijuana? Um, only that uh, it's this recreational is, is, it's not any more complicated in the sense of regulations per se than the medical marijuana, but rolling it out is going to be, um, more difficult because you have personal use, you have, which is much more extensive, you're allowed mm -hmm. um, six plants. If mm -hmm. you're multi multiple users in a home, you're, you know, you're allowed 12. Right. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's all kinds of potential for issues. Um, the asset, I talked to the board, of, one of the things that Trevor, at the trade show, there is all these vendors, but there's also all your state agencies mm -hmm. and I, spent um, time at the Board of Assessors, or the State Assessors Group, um, and there's no consensus on how to assess some of these, you Correct. know, the personal property on this, and, you know, and the plants, and potentially the inventory. Depends on how they set up their, their Yeah, and if it's a corporation versus an LLC, right. um, the state will be collecting all the money, not us. Right, and, so it's important you know, to get our sales tax. So we have to do the sales tax thing, but that's for only retail. And so, you know, there's all kinds of 
I don't know. There's stuff happening that we need to sort out. Mm -hmm. And um, Trevor and I also visited uh, the Mass um, Municipal Personnel Association mm -hmm. um, to talk about evaluations and um, evaluating tools um, for our employees. And that, that was... Um, informative but not very productive in the sense that there seems to be no real one tool and no one I mean there just isn't a lot of satisfaction it's hard with it what yeah so um, we actually belong to that as a town so we're gonna reach out to listserv and try mm -hmm. to generate some information based on um, that and yeah. um, because we the meetings that we attended social media um, policy mm -hmm. Um, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity. We, we we got discounts on our insurance, That's so right. we collected several discounts to, over the weekend, which is actually translates into a few thousand dollars. At least it covers the cost of the, mm -hmm. you know, of our going down there. So that was good. Another um, uh, another um, seminar that I went to was um, just on knowing. Um, knowing your chart of accounts and how your budget's set up and all the different accounts that you have. And um, I think we're pretty clean after coming back and looking at our stuff. There's a lot of towns that have um, old chart of accounts with multiple line items in, the, and, and it just gets really hard for people to follow, um, you know, where, where your money is and how you're spending it year to year. So it's really important to have a clean and up-to-date chart of accounts, which usually gets update, updated about 10 to 50, every 10 to 15 years. There was a great, um, another vendor that was there was called Visual Government Inc. And they, um, they make a really cool thing. That was, um, I think I talked with Kip about this before, and, and I know um, a couple of the finance committee members. They, they make a program where we can enter our data, and it visually kind of puts, us, um, puts the stuff up either on a website or you can print it out and put it on a wall and just exactly splitting up people's you know, when you pay 5000 or 4000 whatever your tax bill is, where that money's going in your government. So you kind of know, you know, how much it costs for waste, you know, wastewater or how much it costs for school and education. And um, it's, it's just making your government more, um, more accessible to the, to the average, you know, to average person be able to pull this up and uh, can ask questions. So I, th I thought that was in the, it's open source, um, software and open data so people can you can go in and, and work on that stuff and I thought that was a really um, a really great thing to try and there is you know they do offer some uh, a charge for some of it and some of it is free so it depends on what it was there was another one that I looked at too, clear.gov which was another website where you could get you know immediately it's on there for free um, they already do this where you could see you know how many school age children are in your town how many employees you have how many employees are at the school what size your budget is, how much you spend on education. So it's really quick data that you can get. And you can compare with different towns. Yeah, you, know, you can just like put in size. the different towns. And it was what was very interesting was uh, like Waitley. Waitley yeah. paid more per student than we paid mm -hmm. per student. It was, it was just interesting. It was. It was pretty interesting to see how that all. How frequently do they update this information? I think it's every budget year that, oh. you know, that stuff gets in there. So it's oh. it's. It was current for what we had in there. It knew what our budget was, and um, and this this was really great. And I'll show you this. Maybe we'll get together at some point. I just thought at town meeting for people to really have a good, vi you know, our information are, now. Yeah, not people town are very yeah. visual on what yeah, you know sure. what what things are and how much things cost and what you know what they're getting for their dollars. So um, I thought that was interesting. We had, of course, our you know, uh, business meeting for the Massachusetts Selectman Association in the morning uh, on Saturday, and then, um, and then they had a lot of breakout sections of you know, learning labs on how to deal with difficult situations. Or um, OPEB was a huge um, one that I went to, and we both, yeah, we both did. We, it was yeah, good. Carolyn and I both went to that, and there's a lot of good information on that. Got some good contacts to people to help explain what it is and where where we're going and what we need to do and what the liabilities are. So um, so it was just really great, really great weekend. It was good, good learning. Um, I'm excited. So it gives you a little, little pep to get back at, and, back um, at work. And today, um, and thank you, Trevor and Kip, both for coming. Um, 
was our municipal vulnerability preparedness meeting. We had gotten a small grant. And the idea is to, um, what's happening is you're trying to transition, or we are trying to transition because it is, uh, all your climate events are accelerating and having more and more impact on us. And I am truly worried how we've been paying for all this stuff right along is through Natural Resource and Conservation Service and the Emergency Watershed Protection Money. And I'm really afraid that is gonna go away. So, um, what this is is about fiscal resiliency and changing from investing in recovery to investing in preparedness. And this is a state's version of climate change um, that they're doing uh, separate from the federal government. It's sort of based on the California thing, things, but program. But um, what's really exciting is the town, because we are part of the Creating Resilient Communities Group, which is 20 communities up and down the Deerfield River, and we've been meeting since um, December of 2011. Most of our information is already here. We had our public meeting today. Um, we prioritized what we wanted to deal with, and hopefully the report will get done and will be sent to the state. We'll be certified, one of the first in the state, and that will put us to head of the line um, to collect money, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, I mean, I was pretty upfront that this was just, we, we needed to do this as a community, and um, it's a new, it, it's how we're gonna be adjusting future going on. I mean, if you look at Buckland, Buckland is still out $600,000 and they're from FEMA, and they're, you know, still fighting, and. I mean, that was in 2011, August of 2011. And I mean, it really does have an impact. And um, I'm just afraid if we're stuck dealing with FEMA, that's you put a, you borrow the money as a town, you do the work, and maybe you'll get over a period of years, you're gonna get reimbursed. So, you know, we can't, it's, it's just, it's, it's too impactful for us. We're at the bottom of the bowl, all this, the deer, Connecticut and the Deerfield, we end up with whatever. So we've got to be much more proactive. This is a program. Um, the priorities that um, we came up with is um, culvert replacement from Richardson's Candy Kitchen, which is actually a mass DOT culvert mm -hmm. um, and catch basin. But um, cleaning out the area between um, Wapping Road and 5 and 10 and Mill Village and replacing that culvert in there. That's like, I think it's probably gonna be about a million three, million five. And um, so we're hoping that's the number one priority that we can get um, money for. There, as, as you know, the Connecticut River and the Deerfield River dams were sold to Great Hydro from TransCanada um, in May, the license transferred. And here we are, almost a year. I mean, it's going May, the May of this year. Um, is a year, and there's no emergency communication plan, and there's no, I mean, there's a lawyer that sends out checks to the investors, and then there's the dam operators, and we have no communication plan, emergency communication plan. So that was our number two priority. Number three priority was better um, floodplain maps and updated floodplain maps to address the post-Irene conditions, which um, our river banks are repairing buffers are in bad shape, but they're truly eight to 16 feet lower um, all along the Deerfield. And so when it floods, it's gonna flood differently mm -hmm. than um, what it did pre-Irene. So the updated uh, maps so that people know truly what, wh where and when they're gonna be at risk at what, in what conditions. And then uh, the next Priority was to update our debris management plan with a proof DEP site in town. We have a regional site at the moment, but it's, it's in the Montague uh, Plains area, which is really fish and wildlife land, land. So, I mean, it's kind of a federal thing, and, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those out there. It's approved by the state, but anyway. So if we have debris like an ice storm where you have all the debris or a river comes down flooding and you have all these trees and stuff, the idea is to have, or we have flooding and you have 
you know, washing machines and refrigerators and all that propane kind of stuff. Tanks. Propane tanks. You got you got to have a place for them. And the only way you get reimbursed is to have your plan, which we do. We have a, pr a pre-approved plan. Kevin was wonderful. We got all this done, but we truly don't have a site in town, and we got to work on that. And then the other thing was. Um, no-till, promote no-till planting through NRCS's programs that would, um, so in other words, you never plow the fields. You keep a cover crop all the time on the fields, and what you're doing is the root system, and you're planting on top of what already is there, so you always have a root system in the ground. And the idea, I went to a presentation um, about two weeks ago at the State Commission. I'm a, the Vice Chair of the State Commission for Soil, Water, and Related Resources. And um, there were, they, NRCS and UMass Extension did this um, presentation, and it was so impressive, where there is a huge amount of carbon is not, is not um, released into the atmosphere because you're keeping roots all the time. But what caught my attention was that phosphorus and nitrogen is also retained in the soil. And we have $3 million estimate for a South Deerfield and Old Deerfield um, plants for a filtration system for, hydrogen, uh, for phosphorus and nitrogen. And if we can rather line our pipes, our, our sewer treatment pipes, collection pipes, because they're old, so you have less infiltration, Instead of money spent on, you know, filtration devices, we help farmers convert to no-till through the NRCS programs that will buy new no-till equipment and help the transition um, over. I, I mean, maybe we don't have to do the $6 million um, hmm. investment in our plants. And also um, establishing the Mosquito District and, and, and making sure that we truly have participation up and down the valley from everybody that um, because in a mosquito district you're exempt from some of your wetland regulations so you potentially could take a lot of the stagnant water and clean out ditches and move the water out which uh, from a public health point of view is huge but also from um, a flooding issue you know, it would help the flooding. So it was very interesting. There was also talk about beaver dam removals and um, uh, up, updating um, our evacuation plans. And now that Yankee uh, Vernon's gone, we don't really have, I mean, not, I mean, we can say it, but I, I mean, the plan, if anyone had looked at it, I don't think it would really work. But we, we should be doing one for flooding train derailment, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there was also capacity emergency training like uh, CERT training, which is your community emergency response members. And, you know, it's basic um, emergency training. So it, it was an excellent day. Mm -hmm. um, I really felt it was worth it. And hopefully, we'll, since we'll be one of the first ones in line, that we actually will get some money out of this. So Great. sounds very cynical, but that's the way it is. Where, where did that six million dollar price tag come for the phosphorus removal? Um, uh, it was in the the reports from Weston and Sampson. You know, on the it's one of the total um, upgrade things, and it was like, oh my God, if we don't have to spend that money, that would be, you know, one of the things. If we could just, we just need to get below the level that they require it, and that's like a three to five year window coming up. So, if we have three to five years to work on that, I might really be, we just have to identify the areas where there's infiltration and where would be the maximum area to focus in on. But I, I was impressed with the amount of things that would happen with no-till. It seemed like a very good, I mean, you're almost reverting back to the old-fashioned way to farm in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. But anyway, there is money on the federal level at the moment for that, and it seemed like a good way to do that. Um, did you have? Oh, I'm sorry. I was sorry. going to see if, you, if yeah. had any. Uh, did you? Yeah, have I was going to hit OPEP a little bit. To talk about stuff. I wanted to talk a little bit about the compensation plan, about the insurance. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about that on the yeah. on the budget. Sure. I, and then I just wanted to mention um, the OPEP uh, a little bit more for people who don't know. That's o uh, other post um, retirement benefits. Um, 
that's generally what it boils down to is insurance for people who are retired. Um, the problem is, is that the cost of insurance keeps going up. And as a town, we can only raise so much money in taxes a year. So um, the difference between what you can raise and the cost of insurance and the more people that are retiring as the years go on is you, really this difference. Is the difference between yeah. here and here. So we need to come up with a savings account, which will then, um, you know, we can draw from when we have highs and lows, depending on who's retiring. And also to, you know, to, to, level, to level out those peak years um, when we have a lot of people that, that retire at a certain time and we have a, or a, a large uh, jump in our insurance, we need to have um, money to cover that other than just pulling it out of free cash or our, you know, operating budget from year to year. So the whole idea is to, to, to have a savings account to do that where, where you can, one, um, get a rate of return and then you can also... Um, also be saving and pull from that where we, you know, we will always every year have money that we'll spend on, on um, retirement for retirees, but we'll, I mean, uh, health insurance for retirees, but it's getting more and more expensive. It's hitting our um, cost of borrowing. Um, so when, um, is it GAS um, GATS? Is it uh, GATS? It's, it's GATSB, um, GATSB 75. 75 when it, it will no longer be... Um, um, it will be mandatory. It's mandatory how much your liability Instead of is. Instead arbitrary. Right. And when 45 was out, it was arbitrary. It was kind of a carrot thing that you should really be putting money aside for this. Um, now that 75 is out, it's mandatory and, it, and it, it, we get hit. So if we have to spend, you know, borrow money to do a project in town, it costs more. So you have the cost of that. You have the cost of the insurance going up and the cost of doing no action at all and, and earning some, uh, some rate of return. So we really need to start focusing on that. So um, I did make some contacts and they're, they're willing to come out and have us uh, speak with our finance committee and people in town to just kind of get it, everybody educated. We, we all know there's a liability. There is discrepancies on how much that liability is, but it's certainly a liability and we have to get started on that, so. Should part of that conversation also be altering the way we do things in the future? Yes, because yeah. it's an all-in approach. Absolutely, I don't, I'm not that experienced in it. But even people who are on the insurance plan now, when you turn 65, you have to apply for Medicare, Medicaid, whichever. Yes, and so that insurance kind of drops out. I don't know what portion of the town keeps going, um, but you know maybe Correct. it could be something like that's yes. something we should talk. Oh no, we already um, we make mandatory make people go to. You know, the, right. medic. the Medicaid. But this is a supplement cost. It's I, I, I agree, though, Kip. We should look at all of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, just we different actually processes, came up how with we a couple. Um, we actually came up with a couple um, good ideas that mm -hmm. we'll talk to you about. Yeah, later. yeah, we have, have sure. a few, few. We heard from different towns and what they're doing and what their liability is and how they're, you know, apportioning some money of, you know, as a percentage. Of what, 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 what the auditors and what the um, bond people and everything are looking for is a regular way for you to deal with it. So Some whether sort of you use um, something else that we had came up with or like a percentage of um, your free cash, like, you know, half a percent of your free cash every year or a percent. Some towns use, it. yeah, and that way if you have no free cash, you, you have a minimal or no contribution. Whereas if you have lots of free cash and you you have it as a percentage, then it's a year that you would put more in automatically. So and, you just have to come up with a policy. And at any year, you can use that to pay current. So if we're in a tight budget, we have some money. We right can now, pay. I just want to caveat I know, right may, now. That, that may, may change. change in the future, yeah. but right now we could at least use some of it to pay current if we had a tight budget year. Yeah. Um, but so there's a lot to learn still on it, and I know I, I spoke with the finance committee before about it, and um, I told them I'd get some info, and I, I, I would just want to educate them more on that. So I know everyone still has a lot of questions. So I found a good resource to bring out. She said she's willing to come and, and talk. So she was wicked nice. Yeah, I, I, and smart. I, yeah. Very smart. So. Um, right. Board of Health comments. Um, did you? We could talk. Well, oh, go ahead. I wanted to talk about con. Um, Conway. A little bit about the marijuana thing. Um, Con, you know, under Board of Health, their their Board of Health and their selectmen are, have put out um, some comments. Uh, comments, um, to, you know, to the uh, Cannabis Control Committee, um, 
and we just wanted to pile on with those comments because they, you know, they're, I have a copy of them for anyone who needs, but they're, that makes sense to, these are a couple of things they found in the draft regulations that they wanted to kind of adjust or change. I, so. I was going to say, I, I looked at them, I, I feel really comfortable with, what, yeah. if we can gin up something on our own letterhead mm -hmm. similar to that, we can, do you want to actually just vote on that or do you want to just, sure we had do you want to have a comment? Control, or, local well, control. Well, have, you haven't had a chance to read them, have you yet? I, yeah, I, I did I think read did. them over, but I didn't. I don't have anything to compare them to, so right. you know, that's well, well, no, this was just comments from the regulations that are being proposed by right. the can and Cannabis Commission. And it, they all make sense to me. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's but it's, it's difficult to, we to just, know if they're good because right. we don't have Compared anything to, to base it to. Yeah. yeah. Well, the only thing is um, we want to get comments in because they're going to be visiting February 6th, which we don't have another meeting before. Well, we might have a meeting well, on the I, 31st. I guess, I guess what I'm, I'm, I'm getting at, if say if you like Conway's comments, why copy them? Because they're just going to be duplicate comments. Yeah, because, the same because, thing. but if enough towns, the way that the um, comment, these public hearings work, yeah. is if enough they towns they comply it and it, compile it, and if there's enough towns that have the same comment, they'll actually make they'll a make, change. I get you. It piles on. It pi it's a pile on kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we, we want to. I make a motion that we um, um, se uh, send a letter similar, have Wendy work up a letter similar mm -hmm. to Conway's comments. I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just want to make sure we get something in before yes. um, um, February 6th. Yeah. We, we are thinking of having a meeting next week. If it, but fine. But... So it's not mean that we can't put in more comments. If you if you can come up with anything else you want to add in, um, I just didn't understand, you know, the, the logic behind asking the same yeah, questions some, multiple right. times. Yeah, know? it's just it's a pile on thing. Yeah, yeah and then they'll feel, feel motivated to um, change, change the th regulations. Um, we're, we'll skip over the administrator's report for a minute because um, Matthew, you are here to speak to us, and I. We could be in the, going on for quite a while. So um, why don't you come up, introduce yourself, and tell us your situation that, I mean, I th I'm pretty sure that I know what's going on, but our audience doesn't, and it would, if you could just give us a little background and, okay? Okay. Well, thanks for inviting me. My name is Matt Nasuti. I live here on Lower Road. been here about 15 years. Uh, and I'm here to talk about, I hope, I try to be real brief because I know you folks are doing a lot of stuff, but I want to talk about something I think kind of, to me it's fun, um, which is wildlife and critical for a whole lot of things here. Um, my background is I used to work for Bechtel Environmental in San Francisco and Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I also used to work for a company called Alaska Petroleum Environmental Engineering. And I was in the military and I worked on Air Force environmental programs around the country. So I've been doing this a long time. Um, the thing with, uh, now I live on sort of the beginning of Lower Road. Behind the house I live in is a fairly large, well, let me say it used to be a fairly large wetlands. Um, it's be, uh, almost, it almost borders the uh, Deerfield River. Uh, Could I just ask, when you say the beginning of Lower Road, like when you go across Stillwater Bridge and yep, take a Yeah, I right? mean, if you know where Savage Farm is, I'm, we're that next house. Okay. Uh, past yep. them. Okay. And the wetlands is sort of behind that house to the East. Okay. And it's also across, if you know where Karen Savage lives, it's across from her house. Okay. Um, been there forever. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's on your list as a designated wetlands. Um, and the reason I'm here is, I mean, when I moved there about 15 years ago, that wetlands was a paradise. It was gorgeous. There were ducks, there were geese, there were uh, tons of rabbits in our yard, there were um, there were huge turtles, I mean turtles 18 inches wide. They would come up, they'd lay their eggs in the sandy soil on the other side of Lower Road and go back. Uh, there were lots of snakes, uh, owls, there were er there, everything you can imagine there. It was really a paradise. Uh, and it was a big beaver family that um, had a big beaver house in the middle of the lake there. Um, and they didn't bother, I mean we, we, we bordered the property. There, there really was very little flooding or anything like that. They'd, they cut down an occasional small tree, but I mean, their main thing is they bottled up that wetlands and kept it healthy. Um, 
So what happened, in, and I think a lot of this happened not on your shifts, so right. it's, it's stuff that's been going on for a while. Um, and what's happened over really the past 10 years is the wetlands now is, I don't want to, it really isn't an exaggeration, it's a wasteland. It's, is it silted in? Because well, that's what we're having nope, a problem. No, nope, it's, been, it, it's been drained by the town. And, and I, I want to get to that. Oh. Yeah, so it's, it's not, it didn't silt in, it was intentionally drained. And, and I'll get to you how this actually all kind of happened, because uh, it was a bunch of steps. But it's, everything's gone. There's no rabbits, there's no turtles, um, not a single turtle. I mean, they may have been endangered turtles, uh, we don't even know. There's n really no snakes, um, no frogs. There used to be tons of frogs. Uh, no duck families, the beavers, uh, the beavers were killed. Um, so there's virtually, it, and it's, it's lost about half of its water. Uh, so the way this happened, and it all happened in steps. And, and I, you know, my, my problem is, is, and it may, may not even be with the, I don't know, the, the, it may not even be with the current Conservation Commission, they have been, but it's, it's basically, I, I put the blame on the commission because here's, here's the way it kind of worked. When we moved there, the, the, the wetlands was, you know, I probably don't have a really good oh, do picture. Do you have any photos? Yeah. It's, I can show you it. It's not. It's, I didn't have a good printer. That's fine. Uh, but essentially, this is uh, my sister's house. Uh, that's Karen's house. So that's lower, that's lower road. road. And where's the uh, like still waters up here? Still waters down here. Down here. This okay. used to be a road that that connected to 91. When oh. 91 went through. So now Karen uses that as her driveway. But gotcha. um, they used to cut across to Upper Road. Um, okay. This is Lower Road. Mm -hmm. The wetlands is essentially here. Um, where it's defined here is a little vague. Yeah. Um, goes down like that. Um, and that's kind of... Um, and these are the kind of the streams and stuff. That's what I'm seeing here, water, yeah, this right? Is a couple, this is a couple years ago. I mean, this used to be... This whole part... All of this used to basically be underwater. Uh, this part is now fairly dry. This part here is still... There's still water. The beaver, the beaver house was there, but that used to be a fairly good-sized lake. Um, so what happened, and I, if I can stand here, I can explain it a little more from closer to you. I hope you don't mind. Nope. No, 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 that's, uh, fine. that's fine. Okay, it began, when we moved there, this house, was, this wetlands was ringed by trees. Okay, pretty much 90% of those trees were cut down. Now, when I go into the regulations, the regulations say you can't cut a tree within 25 feet of the wetlands ever, uh, but the town allowed them to be cut down. Okay, that's issue number one. So there's, there's only a, there's a tree there, there's a tree there, there's a tree there. Pretty much all the trees are gone. Okay. Then what happened is, um, and one of the things I was trying to push the town for is, if you, if you get the aerials, we have aerials of this going back on Google Maps or Google Earth, it'll go back 30 years. What What's see. been happening is, um, the, the town's allowed the farmers to just, what they do is when they replow, they kind of push in a little bit. Because the farm is grandfathered, so they can, they can farm right up to the boundary. Um, Where are you? You're right here? Uh, yes. Okay. So it's that there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see that's all green. It shouldn't be green. It should have to be blue. But um, it's, it's, that's, that's a fairly, it must be a fairly current photo because it's, Probably oh, just Google. It. Yeah, yeah, it's Google. Yeah, it's over not the. What it used to be. Um, so uh, the farmers have been pushing into. I mean, you, if you actually took, if you were to order the town to get you all the Google Maps going back 20 years, and you mm -hmm. actually go out and walk there, mm -hmm. you'll see that this line now dips in, that dips in, this dips in. They've just been slowly kind of inching in, um, and that's hurt a little bit, but that's not a big problem. The biggest problem was uh, there was a big beaver, uh, there's a beaver family there. And, uh, uh, well, let me just say one other thing. Mm -hmm. Down here, this is something that really... So it really just drains into the river somewhere here. Yeah, it actually drains, it drains up this way. Right up there, It'll right? The yep. yep, right up in there. Okay. Um, before I get to the beaver thing, which is, whole, which is the main problem, um, there's one issue that, that really kind of hurts me, and I've dealt with the town before and haven't gotten any place. Right about here, Mm -hmm. You can see it if you go out there right now. This is all part of the wetlands. The farmers have used this as their dumping ground. Um, it's, they, they create, by the fall of every year, mm -hmm. they create a dump pile which is a story high. It's oh, of oh, what? Pallets, 
wood, debris. I, I, I mean, I can't go out there, so I don't know what everything is. I can see the pallets. But they haul out there and they put debris there. In the fall, they contact the town every year, because I talk to the town about it. Um, and the town allows them to pour gasoline all over it. They light it. It usually goes all night. Um, it's a huge bonfire. Mm -hmm. And then the ash just gets pushed into the wetlands. <clears throat> they shouldn't be able to do that, in my view. I mean, that's protected wetlands, uh, personal opinion. But, um, so that, that irks me because they shouldn't be doing that. And, and, and that's harmed the wetlands, uh, but that happens every year. I, you know, I talk to the conservation commission. That? I guess, yeah. yeah. You'll, um, right there. No pile. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, it's, it may be in different pl little different places every year. It's hard to see. I mean, right now, there's a tree there. Right now, the pile is there. Mm -hmm. It used to be here. Uh, I've seen it in different places in this area. Um, so one of the things, which I, I, I actually have a submission I'm going to give to you. One of the things I'm requesting you to do is talk to uh, Conservation Commission. I mean, if that's actually within the, within the boundary, the fire department shouldn't be approving it. Just can't, you can't do that. You can't intentionally set up a dump inside a wetlands. Um, well, I don't think they're setting up a dump. From what you described is they're burning wood pallets. Yeah, well, they're, but they, I Are mean, they burning that's... burning rubbish? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But you know it's pallets. It, I see, I can visually see it from, you know, a thousand yards away or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, but that, uh, that's an interesting, I mean, what can, can you set up, uh, even if it's just all wood, mm -hmm. um, can you set up a wood dump in a wetlands and then pour gasoline on it and burn it? Well, I mean, uh, that's a legal this, opinion you'd have to get. Is this classified as wetlands? As far as I know, it is. Um, that's what, well, we can we can have the conservation commission look at yeah, it again. I mean, it, see where you don't have to necessarily write that. It's all in my submission. I'm asking you that specific. Yeah. But okay. I, and I'm asking you to just look at it um, mm -hmm. because it um, one one of the things when when <clears throat> I asked Wendy this, but I knew she was sick and it may not have happened. Um, let me just back up a little bit okay. for this because I'm going to try to try to be really quick. Um, one of my uh, when I kind of look at the conservation commission and I look at other conservation commissions in other towns. The conservation commission was, is, is set up under statute under the uh, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. It is set up with one goal only, which is to protect wetlands. Okay, so when you look in other towns, uh, in their bylaws, the duties of the, uh, of the conservation commission are protect wetlands. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the town of Deerfield doesn't say that. The town of Deerfield says that the duties of the conservation commission are to con Something like, it's pretty vague, it's conserve all the resources of the town or something like that. That's what it says. Well, I think the state is pretty clear, too, that the conservation commissions are to protect the health and well-being of people and to also keep the wetlands protected. It doesn't necessarily, it's not there just to protect the wetlands, it's there to protect people. In return, you get a healthy uh, environment from protecting the wetlands. That's a fair statement. I, I can't disagree with that. Uh, I, I mean, I would really like it, as one of my requests, really like it for the bylaws to say exactly what you said. Because, you know, the emphasis is on, I mean, to, to some people that I talk to in the town, the, the emphasis of the Conservation Commission. And, it, you know, I'm in politics, people go all different ways, and that's, yeah, that's the way politics, but, I mean, the, the emphasis seems to be um, development, um, which can be a legitimate reason and stuff. But, I mean, it's, it's, to me, the emphasis, just my personal opinion, the emphasis of the Conservation Commission should be more on the protection side. They should be saying no more than they do. I mean, I've gone through all their minutes for years and stuff, and there's not a lot of no's, in my opinion. Um, the, the other thing, the next step is I, I talked to Wendy, and I, and I said I'm going to be coming in here, and I'd like to see the file on, on this wetlands, okay? Because the way you manage your wetlands uh, I used to do that uh, fish, with Fish and Wildlife and, and with the Air Force and everything, and you, you manage it by um, having a file, uh, which indicates what the boundaries are, um, which indicates what wildlife is there, what you're trying to achieve, periodic ex inspections, maybe if there's complaints, you have them in there, you know, onward and onward. So as far as, I, I mean, um, <clears throat> I submitted the public records request. That's basically what I've gotten so far. Um, it should have been really easy. They should have said, we'll just come down. We have a file on mm -hmm. this wetlands. It has everything in it. Uh, bing, bing, bing. I don't know if you have a file on it. Don't know. Uh, uh, I, I can tell you we don't. We don't. 
we don't actively manage any wetlands that I'm aware of on private property. The board uh, of selectmen. Uh, no, the town. The town, the town because it's because it's private. Well, not only that, it's. I mean, we we've always had a volunteer board, I and mean, nobody yeah. gets paid to do this. So and we we've never and we've never budgeted yeah. any money that I'm aware of to manage any wetlands anywhere in town. Yeah. I mean, it, we just we just don't do that, and it's not. Um, I mean, private landowners can go to the conservation district and get conservation plans, and there is incentives for private landowners to do that, but municipalities are not allowed to do that. I mean, we're not um, eligible applicants for any kind of money to do that. Well, again, I mean, that's, I appreciate your comment. My, again, it's just my opinion that the statute, when I talk to the DEP folks, they say that the state is supposed to, I mean, the, the Conservation Commission is supposed to manage the wetlands in each town. Um, what, well, that means, well, what that means? I was going to say managing wetlands is maybe like kind of a vague way to say that if an issue comes up, they will go out and do a site visit and decide what's going on. But to manage in the way you're talking about when you have a formal plan and, and, and enforce that plan, habitat. do habitat, n n our town is not doing that. And I think no town in Massachusetts is doing that unless they were able to partner with like the Audubon or the Nature Conservancy or somebody that would even do that on town land because you can't, you, I mean, us as a municipality cannot go on to private property and do that. Uh, by law, I don't think we're allowed. I mean, I may be wrong, but um, I know from my work on the Conservation Commission, I mean the Conservation District, excuse me, not Commission, District, um, we um, go out and we try to talk and meet with landowners to participate in like woodlands management, you know, forest management plans. Because one of the biggest um, issues in Massachusetts is that our for we have more trees now than when the pilgrims arrived, but it's really fragmented. In other words, like I myself have eight acres of woodland. We don't do anything except when a tree falls down, my husband cuts it up or something, but we don't actively manage that eight acres. And everybody all across the state has a portion of, of you know, the forest land. And so there's not no contiguous management plan. So at the district, we try to get people to sign up and they can get money to have a uh, forest management plan. But the minimum acreage is like 10 acres. Um, the minimum acres to participate in the conservation district is five for any of the NRCS um, programs um, that you would be able to, you know, get up a, a, con a conservation plan or, um, you know, apply for a program. So it's, 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 and it's, and it has to be private landowners. At the moment, municipalities cannot apply. So I, and, and no, and having budgeted for years, there's no money for that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that it's not a good thing to do. And we have in the last three or four years, we've gone through cycles. I would say 10 years ago, we were trying to get to work with UMass to come up with a forest management plan. And we are again talking about it as we ha on our town forest, trying to get a management plan by working with UMass and having, you know, an intern or something like that that would work. Because otherwise we'd have to pay a professional forester to come in and do that. And it's not a lot of money, but it might be five or six thousand dollars. And, you know, that's five or six thousand dollars that I mean, it would be very hard to get through the finance committee because <laughs> they'd be like, what are you doing this for? And, but it, it, it makes sense to do mm -hmm. because this is, what, this is how right. you prepare for the future and you, and you manage the forest in a way that's sustainable and you, you, know, you cut down all your diseased wood and all that kind of stuff and you don't have a pileup and you create habitat, open space for different animals and, and everything. I mean, I'm 100% on... Mm. on the same page with you about plans, but we as a town cannot go onto private property and require that people have a plan unless they want to do something. You know, like if they came and they were gonna develop, put houses in, you could say, well, and they wanted to put 
X number of houses and you could trade off a conservation restricted area for four more or five more houses or something. I, I forget what our mm -hmm. we have a conservation plan in the planning board, but to my, to my knowledge, no one has ever used it. Um, but the idea is to have set aside a strip of property for um, conservation and habitat and all that kind of stuff. And you would have to have, the developer would have to have an active plan. But, I mean, to, we can't require private people to do that, uh, as far as I know. Well, the, I mean, the thing is that um, there's no way to, pre I mean, you don't need to go on these wetlands, because I don't go on them, they're not my property. But I can see from the road I can see the trees being cut down, the, 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 the inroads into them and things like that. Um, I mean, the town, does, the town is the main point of contact for enforcing the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, how do they do that unless they at least periodically look at these wetlands and say, you know, are they being damaged or not? Well, we no. could pass on to the Conservation Commission uh, your concerns, and they can do a site visit maybe. I, I, but see, I, then they'd have to have they'd have to have that. They have to. Well, think, well, you know, what they would do would be developing a some information on the site. I can tell you right now that the reason why you don't have anything is because we as a town don't have anything. Okay, but I, the, let me get to the main. I, I, yeah, I want to move. Sure. I, I appreciate all your comments. I'll get to yeah. the main thing, which is the the reason this was drained is there was a there was a nice beaver family there. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, one day. Um, I was, I was talking to somebody from Savage Farms, I had some friends over there, and they said, well, the town approved uh, killing the beavers. Um, we, uh, adjoining landowner, we didn't have any notice of it. Beavers were gone, house was, beaver house was destroyed. They destroyed all the dams. Uh, How many years ago was this? Five years, something like that. It's hard to say, I, I, I can't remember exactly. Um, since then, uh, I mean, whether they just, Again, I couldn't go on the property, so I don't know exactly what they did. I know they destroyed the dams. Whether they destroyed them and also underdug them, I don't know. But the net impact is visually seen from, the, from just the road, which is they significantly drained the wetlands. All went out to the river. Yeah. Now, uh, the thing as far as the beavers, let me, let me just do just a quick thing about the beavers. Mm -hmm. I mean, the history of the beavers, something like 1932, there, there wasn't a single beaver in Massachusetts. Uh, the legislature got real concerned because the forests were dying, so they introduced in a massive way beavers. There's now about 70,000. Um, originally, beavers were a completely protected species. You couldn't kill a single one. Then they got too numerous, and they do get pesky in certain instances. So uh, the legislature adopted Section ADA, which gives the towns specific authority if you meet one of these criteria for issuing a permit to have the beaver killed. Okay, so I went through ADA and I couldn't find a single one that applied to this beaver. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely nothing they were doing impacted anything in the statute. Um, the only thing they have about farmland in, is that if a beaver is causing uh, flooding resulting in, quote, substantial economic loss to the farmer, uh, that's Pop a criteria. Loss. But yep. substantial economic, I mean, this was, it doesn't meet that criteria. So. I, one of the questions I have here, which I'll be asking you, which asked the commission, is what was the criteria used for killing the beaver? I can't find a single one. Um, okay. So the, now, if the beaver, in my view, was illegally killed, the beaver family, and that caused the destruction, and, and, and there, there's two questions. One, it's the, it's the killing of the beaver, and then it's the breaking of all the dams. I'm not sure you can legally do that in a protected wetlands. But anyway, the net effect is that the wetlands is basically drained or substantially drained. I don't, I don't want to say completely. It's maybe more than half of what it was. Mm -hmm. The question is, if it was illegally done, there should be a remedy that the town should order. Uh, you cannot re... I, I talked to the state, uh, wildlife biologists. Uh, they won't approve reintroducing the beaver. But they, they said to me, hey, look, here's how it works. They said, uh, essentially, I mean, if you go in and put the dam back in, um, beavers are attracted to water. Mm -hmm. if, if you restock it uh, with fish, they will just naturally, a beaver will naturally come along and jump in there. Mm -hmm. And once the beaver does that, I mean, essentially the beaver is your employee. The beaver will work for the town for free. The beaver will do all the work. The beaver will bring back that wetlands. You don't have to do anything else. Um, 
really low, uh, vir virtually no cost. It's a no cost. You just you dam it, put in a little fish, and, and five years from now, you're going to have that wetlands back. Um, so w one of the things I'm asking you here uh, in, in the request that I'll be submitting you is to do that, uh, is to look at it, uh, evaluate, determine that the beavers were uh, not lawfully uh, killed. They were unlawfully killed. Therefore, there needs to be a, uh, the, the wetlands has suffered substantial damage. A very simple remedy. Um, and, and then, yeah, we have a success story. You know, I mean, I understand there's a lot of folks in this town, and I, I completely understand it, and it makes sense. We were pro-development stuff. But in this section of the Connecticut River Valley, I mean, green is really attractive. It's attractive for um, people, look, homeowners who want to move in. It's attractive for businesses. It's attractive for investors. I mean, I get, no offense, I get on a town's website. There's nothing green there. There's no, there may be success stories. I, I mean, I, you folks know, I don't know. But there's nothing that pops out at me as an investor. You know, I want to look at Greenfield, um, or Deerfield, excuse me. Uh, there's no, but this could be for, for virtually no cost, just you issuing an order saying you got to dam that up, uh, which you're entitled to do. Uh, you could, you know, you'll have a success story. And I mean, then I, I want to I just emphasize one other thing about this. And it's, this isn't hypothetical because I've actually seen it. Once the animals and the birds and so forth are, are gone from this wetland, which they substantially are, I have seen um, what happens is I, those are the natural predators. And in response, I've seen an increase in rodents. I've seen an increase in grasshoppers. I've seen an increase in locusts. I've seen an increase in uh, ticks. I've seen an increase in grasshopper. Well, grasshopper is another type of locust. Um, the cicadas, um, uh, crickets. You know, I mean, you've taken away all the natural predators and mosquitoes uh, because the fish are gone, and the fish used to eat all the, the mosquito larvae. Um, so what happens is when you, get rid of the, when you get rid of the animals, when you drain the wetlands, um, I mean, the, the, the insects and the rodents just bloom. I mean, they love it. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a substantial and noticeable impact. Um, and that can all be reversed. And, you know, and, and I don't know the whole town. Um, but if this is happening in my wetlands behind the house, um, is it happening all over Green uh, Deerfield? I don't know. Um, I mean, well, we just had a meeting today talking about um, beaver dam removals and um, you know dredging ditches to get the water moving. So <laughs> kind of kind of different than what this is. Yeah. Um, I mean, they are pests. I, I mean, it, it can, I mean, and that's why the statute says there's a whole lot of criteria that give you authority to do yeah. that, but not in the wetlands. Um, well, um, what we'll do? Do you have your request yeah, in writing? Oh, great. Do and, uh, and uh, let me just see if I missed. And then we'll pass it on to the conservation commission and put it, put it on their agenda. So. One for each of you, and there's one for oh. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, we'll uh, one for Actually, that's good for the minutes. Okay. Thank you. I can, I can take hers. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I, again, I, not to beat this in the ground, but I just look at it as, I mean, to me, I, you know, I, I, I always used to do a lot of mediations where you try to bring everybody together, you know, and, and there's like pro development people and there's pro environmental people. This one, if you agree to it, uh, let, let's say that to, to do what I recommend. Um, everybody should be on board with it because there's almost no cost um, to, to, I mean, and, well, and at the same time, it, well, it is. don't forget it this. Damn. On, well, so this, this is, property. this is private property. So, right. I mean, there is a cost. Yeah, so. I, I didn't say it's no, there's almost no cost. Um, and it's, it's a green project and um, it'll be, you know, I, I don't know. Have but, you reached out to like Mark Stetson at DEP? He's one of the no. deal with that. Yeah, I mean, I talked to the DEP, I mean, they don't really, they, they've, t I mean, I've talked to them. I mean, I've talked to T uh, Tim McKenna and um, Dave Fowlis down there, and they don't, they're overstaffed and they don't do, I mean, it's a small project for them. They don't do it. They just keep referring me to the town. Uh, they pass it off. Whether they should be passing it off, I don't know, but they do. Um, 
Well, what we will um, uh, give this to the conservation, conservation Commission and ask them to put this on their agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's not really much else for us to do at the moment, but um, um, you could talk to Wendy, um, you know, when the Conservation Commission meets and come up and talk to them, okay. you know, at their meeting. That would probably be the most productive thing. Although, I mean, this is pretty complete, yeah, so, nice um, but they might plan. still have some questions and, um, you know, it makes, makes sense. But, but I don't want you to think that we, as a town, haven't responded to your request. It's just, I'm sure, I would guarantee there's just no information. Because we, we as a town don't manage that. I can, t I can tell you that. Yeah, I mean, one of the concerns I have there's, is- There's no money for any kind of person or anything to do that, to do those, that kind of work. So. Um, yeah, it, it, it's tough because when I talk to DEP, I mean, they're, yeah. They, they push it all back on the town. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a town responsibility. They're the, the primary point of contact for the Wetlands Protection Act, you know, for day-to-day, for -day, not for big spills or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of, I go to them, they push it here, I go, it's, you know. I, I, I know, you know what you're you saying. Know, yeah. and, and it it, but it is a money thing. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is. Um, it's all about priorities. Yeah, I, um, that's why I kind of wrote this out in some ways to, to be the, the least expensive, mm -hmm. easiest way to maybe do it. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I'll tell you this, I I'll, I'll volunteer my time to, do, to build the dam. I think, I think um, they're, you know, you know they're, they're beautiful areas to look at. You have the one up on 116 in the Conway, that Beaver Dam's been there for a long time. It's a beautiful area. I know, I think there was one across the street from that. Do you know the one I'm talking no, about? No, Just not. before you get into Conway, there's some open fields on the left and then there's a, beaver dam on the right and i fear like whenever that dam goes that house down the road is going to uh -huh. get completely taken out well that's out. what the um, discussion was when you get uh, you know uh, so much rain there's no way to um to, to, to so when you have to go i mean it's huge risk it's a huge risk and yeah. then across the way there was an old barn and uh there was a beautiful beaver dam there and all but but i think somebody had to remove that because it was just getting unsafe um i think there's one up the road a little bit I mean, it's a beautiful place. I mean, it does kill all the trees around it um, because obviously they're, you know, they're, they're not designed to sit in water like that except for some species. But, um, I, you know, I, they're gorgeous to look at, but, I, you know, I just don't know about how you, um, how you require a private citizen to, to make them, you know, when it was dammed up by a beaver to begin with, how you make them go and do that again. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, costs. the whole question is if, if that previous... If volunteer, if the, if the landowner wanted to and, and you got volunteers to come around and do that, that's a, I think that might be a different story. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I'll do right. all the work. Right. Uh, that's not the, I mean, it's a pretty narrow channel. It, it's mm -hmm. only about four feet wide that you're damming up. Where the dam was originally? Yeah. 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 Um, it's... Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the whole well, issue is, is, and that's the way I phrased it, is if that landowner applied for the beaver permit and he wasn't entitled to it which is what my contention i see i don't know yeah then then that was improperly issued and therefore there should be a remedy which is gotcha. um, yep. but that's mm -hmm. that yeah, we'll depends on that. what your you know what the justification for the town was which i don't know right um, we don't need, i don't either yeah. yeah so okay all right sir well thank you hey thanks for folks. coming i appreciate in. all the yeah. help i, I took you. longer than i thought and i know you've been here a long time that's and I good oh no that's okay okay good here thank you thanks Thanks so much. Um, so we'll, we'll go down to the town administrator's report. So I have a couple of things. I know, you know, Wendy's out, but um, she wanted me to hit on a couple of items that were, um, that, you know, she was, I, I'll leave it to her to fill out, you know, I think hopefully we'll meet next week. Um, I'm going to talk to you and uh, Kip about that if you oh, yeah, had no, a we, chance to uh, yeah, maybe meet next, next week, week okay. at all. Yes. Just okay, to catch so up a little we'll, bit. We'll confirm the that next week is... Great. Um, we're going to meet them. And then uh, she'll I don't uh, know where. I guess um, we got to write that down somewhere. Yeah. Because we got to post that. Yes. And get that posted. Um, she uh, was saying that the um, New England Natural Bakers seems to be moving forward. Um, I think the uh, yes. bank did a walk through and 
they believe that they'll close in time so we don't need to extend anymore. And then the uh, um, state is working with them on uh, stuff. Comment? I think that there's a, a, a big issue here is in the commitment letter from the bank was only for the purchase of the land. Okay. And the scenario that runs through my mind is that if we allow this to happen and the bank lends them the money, if they can't get finance for the building or if something goes bad, the bank now owns this and they can do what they want with the property. And that's why this town spent a lot of money to buy that, to mm -hmm. protect that. And it was People sold. One minute? Yes, oh, Steve, sure. please. Yes, Steve, please. Steve, it's private property. We already know. I, we just needed to get on with our meeting. There is a process for us to enforce the Wetlands Protection Act. Okay. It involves an RDA being filed, request for determination of applicability. But that has we to then, be filed by the landowner, doesn't that it? That has to be, if anyone can file one. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't that, realize that. At that point, we would schedule a site visit. It's a public hearing. It's posted in the papers. We schedule a site visit. We are not allowed on anybody's property subject to arrest if we trespass. Excuse me. I was just out in the parking lot. Yeah, I cursed. Gentleman, he yeah. cursed me. I did. He came right up to me and threatened me. I didn't threaten you. You're a when liar. You, when you come to a few feet, you're, you're a liar. liar. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry? Because you have Don't crashed the entire conservation commission. To say nothing of DEP, who I've been working with for 25 years, and you sit here and you lie. Well, I don't like aggressive conduct. There's no, there's, there's no room for incivility. No room for cursing. There's no room for lying. There's no room for getting right up to somebody's face. There's no room for you so you're doing... Need to... I, I want some space next time I see you, okay? Let's just, hope we don't just, meet just again. Be, just be Let's hope we don't meet again. Wow. 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 So we then, we then go out and do a site visit. We will then determine, usually with the help of either DEP or an engineer, wetland scientist, if there is jurisdiction. If there's jurisdiction, we can either issue a positive or negative determination. At that point, if it's a positive determination and there's a notice of intent issued, they hire an engineer, they issue the notice of intent, we, and then at that point, will send that notice of intent out for independent review because we are not scientists. Mm -hmm. Right, I know. At that point, and it all goes to DEP for, for, for review also. We cannot be damming up streams. Right. No, we can't. I mean, this is we all just had a meeting today where beaver dam removal is a huge issue. I know. He's telling you that he's contacted DEP. Mm -hmm. He did. And DEP does, at that point, refer it back to us. Correct. He has never once contacted me, and as far as I know, anybody on our board. Hmm. To say that he did is a lie of omission. Okay. Bottom line, he never contacted us. When I did get Wendy's email, Kevin and I went out on Monday, his day off, yep. and did a site visit. We looked at it, it's like we had several inches of rain on frozen ground, there was a washout. It happens. I thought it happened in my own house when I lived on River Road. The town had to send a front end loader to put my driveway I, I back in my driveway. I did a site inspection today, this morning, on the way to the meeting at 10 o'clock this morning. I, I, I went out there, too. Hay bales are out, all kinds of stuff. It's the middle of winter. I know. There's little we can do. And as far as the beavers, if you look at the email he sent, he's virtually accused me personally of going in and killing those beavers. Mm. Um, I think you forget that the Board of Health signs off on the beaver removal permits. I've had the, I've had the Board of Health sign off from removing beavers from Bloody Brook in front of my house because it was undermining my bridge. Mm -hmm. It undermines and threatens people's septic systems. We've, gone, we've done that I a know. million times. I know. But I cannot sit here. I could not sit at my house and listen to I'm the sorry. Conservation Commission being trashed mm -hmm. after the 25 plus years I spent on Louie's been on for years, Ben's been on for years, Brian's been on for years, and Matt Ainsworth has just started with us. Why would people want to volunteer? Mm. I know. It is all volunteer. We, 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 not very many people usually call us up 
Well, I, I mean, we get trashed on a regular basis. Well, he was basically trashing us as a Board of Health, or me, because I, I, you guys weren't here. But it, it was a le illegal beaver removal permit. But and I did. I'm sure we had, we, we signed them off when there is one of the reasons that was reached. And I'm sure there was a reason reached. And the reason there's no file is that we cannot go out and just willy-nilly wander around people's private property. No, I, I, I told him that. I said, no, we, we can't, you don't manage people's wetlands on and private property. I didn't want the Conservation Commission to be thrown under the bus right. after all the work we have done. Right. And, and, and Steve, and you know how I feel about your participation over the years. I've worked with you many, many times, and I'm always so impressed how attentive you are. You work, you try to come up with a resolution. And that is practical and is in, is environmentally friendly as well, and I and I appreciate that. Well, I, so I'm just just we've want you worked to know. very hard on I behalf know. of this town for decades. Okay. I know. I, I honest to God, I do know. And I'm what, not just what saying he's that. accusing the conservation commission of doing of being pro development. We are limited by the law as to what decisions we are able to make. We cannot stop a development if they meet all the criteria of the Wetlands Protection Act. Mm -hmm. Then, if we try to do that, we are then subject to lawsuits ourselves. Sure. We have a certain things that we can do, there are certain things we cannot do. Mm -hmm. The law is very specific. And the last thing I'll say is that we are also entitled by the law, by the Wetlands Protection Act, to act or not act as we see fit as a Conservation Commission on a violation of the Wetlands Protection Act. People who don't like our decision are then allowed to appeal it to the state DEP. Mm -hmm. We've had very few of those in the last 25 plus years that I've served. Right. Most of it is chairman. Right. So, and yes, I was rude to him outside. I will not pretend that I wasn't. But when he says, I get, he says, you come here. And it's like, yeah, well, what do you want? What are you going to do? Mm. So, I appreciate the time. I know I wasn't on the agenda, but we I thank you for the your emails. Input. I saw the accusations that were made. I listened to the accusations, and at, at the end, that's it. I'm not going to tolerate well, it. You have to stand up for yourself, and I appreciate you coming. Well, I've got to stand up for the other board members. Absolutely. And, you know, we've worked. DEP has done a lot for this town. Mm -hmm. They've come up here and done a lot of good work. And, and I have to out. say, I, I want you to know, I'm so appreciative of the relationship you have with DEP. It and has benefited the town tremendously. Mm -hmm. We've oh, called we on pride. DEP many a times. Uh, I. Steve, I agree. I. So that's all I've got. So thanks for your time. All I appreciate it. I am you. sorry that you felt you had to come in. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, okay. Moving on. Um, so just hit, hitting on. Wait. What? In the kitchen. Oh, in the kitchen. right in the kitchen. Ki in the kitchen, John. Yep, yep. John, uh, we also um, had. I think Brenda's still here. There was something you needed to sign in the warrant. And um, also, um, Trevor and I had gone and met with the Board of Assessors group. Um, and we wanted just to touch base with you on the marijuana um, assessing. Um, Wait, I can't hear you. Wait, oh, okay. Take your time. It's OK. When, when I was signing the warrant tonight, I noticed that Brenda had um, Karen's timesheet time for you to sign in the warrant. I signed that the other day. Oh, well, there's one that's blank still in there. You I must have sign. missed. Maybe it was. Maybe the, it's a duplicate or something. But I don't know. Yeah. It was blank. So, I mean, the... your signature was not there. Okay. Um, so you I, sign it? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's it on the on desk in there on. Uh, um, Jen's desk, and then the um, and then the other thing is um, Trevor and I had um, met. We went to a couple workshops on marijuana, and then we had some questions on assessing that they couldn't answer, and so we went to the board of assessors group, the you know at their booth, um, the state the state group, and um, they said that. We should reach back out to you because you're the most experienced in the state. And he said it was evolving and that we needed to 
talk to you about our concerns. And my concern was, you know, a little plant could get wilt and then that's it. And that's totally different from a assessing point of view than the end product that's like ready to go. And you had cycles, if, if they're in greenhouses, you have multiple cycles through the year. So how, how are we going to assess that successfully? And they said that there was too many questions and that we needed to get together with you. And it, it is certainly, certainly evolving. And to be honest with you, I don't know what the final answer is going to be. But it's, it's going to be interesting. Well, I, my concern is that there's potentially extra you know work if you have multiple cycles in a in a year you know what how are we going to we need to find to figure out how to how the mechanics of this and um, apparently okay. we need uh, you're the expert in the state basically <laughs> I, I i wanted you to know that we said we're from Deerfield, and they said, oh, John will know what to yeah, do. Exactly. <laughs> so I thought you would appreciate that. <laughs> so I don't, you know, Trevor and I were like, well, okay, we'll, we'll have to get with you and try to figure out something. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're, whatever we have to do, we have it set up for us. And it doesn't seem like the state is coming up with, I mean, we could end up with this stuff happening this summer, and we don't have any guidelines, and it's driving me wacko. I'm really, uh, I'm really concerned that, you know, I used to be a federal agent, <laughs> and I'm really concerned about breaking federal laws, so. It, I think that part is going to get sorted out relatively quick. I, I don't know. Depends on who you listen to, you know. I know, I know. Let's see where it goes. Okay. Well, we'll have continuing conversation. Okay. Right. I, I just wanted us to be know that we have to be on top of this and that the state has no guidance. And their guidance was, well, you better sit down with John and sort it out because he's the expert in the state and he'll find out how to get a dollar out of it if that's what you're worried about. And I said, yes, that's what I was worried about. So. Okay. All right. We'll work on that. We'll work on it. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Okay, so, uh, now we got to go back to our thought so process. Just, um, Kip, the, my understanding is, um, I mean, I'm, I would be concerned about that too, but I oh. think we can put on um, some kind of, like, you need to build the building in this time of frame, but I'm actually not as concerned as I was in not too long ago because um, the state is really involved in this. They're, they're doing all kinds of state development programs they they had state people coming out and doing I, involved in this and, and, and through I, the seeds and eads that i sit on i i, I understand that but <clears throat> the the bottom line is if somebody's involved with this type of a project you know financing is maybe not always from one source but they work together and and that's that's something that as a board we have to at least consider because mm -hmm. if oh, it doesn't, I, I, I mean, it's been a long time since this happening. And I know that the town was at fault for some of the delays, but you know, there's a lot of unanswered issues. If you remember the issue about the sewer and water, the water there, line, um, I, they've Still never haven't, addressed that. They really hasn't so come th to there a, is, This is one hurdle, but I mean, I wonder if we could have another this is a, meeting with them. Oh, I think it's worth following up. I don't, there's no question yeah. about yeah. that. I, I'm just saying that it's a relief. It seems like it's moving. Once now that they um, they followed their banker out to the Berkshires, wherever that bank is. Well, right, and, they followed them to Connecticut. Oh, yeah, is, Connecticut. oh Connecticut. I guess, whatever. I guess my concern is like, why wouldn't the bank say, okay, you know, we're, we'll do we'll the whole do, we'll do the project. Canoodle. Yeah. Yeah. Instead right. of just the land. Yeah. Yeah. We should. I would love to talk to them about that. I well. My understanding is that the state is putting together a package. That's for the one building of the, itself. Yeah, hmm. the, they're applying through the state for this. I, so I, I, I I'm, I'm I not. Think, but it's worth having another meeting. Right. I'm I not. I'm not worried about that. This board should be very careful. cautious. Yeah, we should be careful. To, you know, before we sign anything or agree to anything more. I, mean, I agree. We, we've we've signed. I think eleven. 
11 extensions? This is the yeah, well, yeah, and so, apparently and they don't need another one. Yeah. I think last kind of said, you know, we'll, we'll do it this time, but. No more. You know. And apparently they're going to close yeah. in February, so within that time frame. But, but I, here again, that's just on the land. That's, that's Correct, part, correct. So, yeah. So I agree. Yeah, we, we should. should we should get another meeting should, together. Maybe mm -hmm. we can ask. Have another meeting and, and definitely have. We haven't seen them. In well, and I'm not really right sure um, if we have to just renew that the whole TIF agreement too. I mean, because it's been a while. I, I don't know how. Could. I don't know how long the, a TIF agreement goes for. If it's open ended or. I don't know. I I'd mean, have to honestly, read the agreement. I mean, we haven't. We haven't done it for so long. It's usually that, I mean, based it's, on. You it's know. been a while. I mean, because it's been. It's been. And again, part of it was our problem. Well, it's but, been longer than but I've it's been, been on the board. But it's been two years, I think. At least. So, I'm not sure if there's like, I mean, we need we need legal but help. It's so been more than two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we need legal help. But we it's from the time we signed off on the TIF. So I don't, you know, that's a different time frame. So I don't know. Well, Trevor yeah. says you'd have to read it and see what the wording is. Mm -hmm. right. If there were specific dates in that or. Or, you know, it was just or, from or different, date of different lines of uh, items suggesting, you know, upon completion of the building, the certificate of occupancy, whatever that might have been. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an important part. Yeah, I think if we could maybe ask Wendy to see if the you know, Bakers would come in for another. I haven't seen them in a year, anyways, just to have a follow up, you know, now that they've. Well, we can have a fault. We should have a fault meeting and say, like, oh, this is really that? nice. Why We're don't so we glad. Try to think of some questions. The and water are important about this, and and give them some heads up. So mm -hmm. when they come you know, in, it's I don't, not like I don't mean this like it's going to be a total waste. But no sense of having them coming here and then we ask them twenty questions. And say, well, we're going to have to go get the answer. Well, answer actually, and that's a good idea because then they could forward it to their engineer without actually having to pay well, for the engineer the to come mm -hmm. yeah. into the meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of it's fairly simple. Sure. Yep. Um, I agree with that. Okay. A um, couple other things she was hitting on. Um, there was a meeting recently um, about sludge, um, a regional meeting, I think, and Jan Amin put together. And so she she had she was hoping to bring us something uh, fairly soon about the outcome of that meeting. And they're talking regionally. There was, um, I think, uh, is it Dumphy was there as well? Stan's. Uh, oh, oh no, yeah, no, that's like, Steve A's. Steve Stephen's aide was yeah, there. Paul Dumphy. Um, Paul Dumphy was there, and so so there was the pe the right people were in the room having a discussion about sludge and how we're was dealing here? with this. I don't day? think it was here. They did have one the other day here. Monday, oh, maybe it was. I'm not. Yeah, there were people from all clear. the area night. I'm oh, kind maybe, of maybe. Off of, yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't. I don't know if that's one, but they did yeah. have one, and Jan was here as well. Oh, well then. Oh, that, then maybe that, that probably was. It was. Then. Yeah. That was probably it. I'm going off of um, Wendy's Monday. notes. So, and then there was a discussion about. Um, health insurance, whether to stay with Hampshire or to have Maya. And we got a bid from Maya. That's still up in the air, but I think that people well, are leaning towards staying, staying with, with Hampshire the, Trust. With, so we have some local control and things, but I, do you have some Well, the, you know, I, I got some of the things from Wendy and okay. uh, and, and I, I've, I've read it in my own background of knowing it. It's um, Maya has come in with some prices that are do you mind if I just look at that? Because no, no, no. actually I haven't seen it. They're they're almost the same. Mm -hmm. uh, they were still thirty thousand dollars more. Uh, Wendy said that she got another email suggesting that they would match it this year. Right. One of the problems is, is this organization has not been consistent with their rates. Where we currently are has been level for six to seven years. Yeah. An rate increase. And then they had an increase. And but then there was an increase. But it, and it really wasn't as big as what this other outfit did for the last seven consecutive years. I so see. it's Combined. quite a bit more. And that I've, I've, what's the other one? The GIC? The yeah. GI, oh, the GIC so, is not a the, good deal. Yeah. Well, the Teachers Union of Mass have been having a real issue, and they've since contacted the, the, our carrier to see if they can get involved, which would be a huge unit for this organization yes. to get. But you know, once again, they're they're pretty diligent about looking at their claims and stuff like that to see. Yes. They don't want to take on something that is going to jeopardize the current units, which right. we are one of. Um, and and I, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, people like the um, town administrator in Belchertown um, and the town administrator in South Hadley, 
you know, have looked at this, you know, the same thing that Wendy has done mm -hmm. uh, very comprehensively several years in a row, and it's always come out that our current provider has been, you know, far and above all the other ones. And uh, local. Yeah, and I mean, it isn't that I, I dismiss looking around, but I, I think that, uh, you know, we looked at the information, it's not any better, and one of the big things is if we do leave, if we thought that, you know, mm -hmm. go changing supply, uh, providers would be good this year, we can't go back to you the You may other not way. just be able to you jump know, right no, back a in. It's a two-year wait minimum, and then right. it, we could be denied. Right. I just don't think that it's worth the risk. Yeah, or for the even, money difference, even spending any more time. Talking well, about okay. It, you know, I, all my years of doing this yep. and looking at different things, there is nobody out there has been consistently better than the Hampshire Trust. Yeah. And I mean, I worked so hard to get the schools mm -hmm. into the Hampshire Trust because the savings was truly a million dollars. Wow. A million dollars over three years that it took the schools to switch to the Hampshire Trust that we would not have paid. Wow. And I mean, that's just wow. an instant. So I, I would say, um, you know, that it's lovely that it's close, mm -hmm. um, but I, there is no good reason because of their history mm -hmm. and their track record. Mm -hmm. um, and, we ha and we have saved substantially by moving the school's, you know, frontier mm -hmm. to um, the Hampshire Trust. And I, I just, I mean, it's just not worth it. It's good to keep checking. Yes. We yes. need to yeah. do that. But um, there's just absolutely no reason. Keb, everything you've said, I agree with. Yeah. Um, would you, I, then, is it fair to say that, you know, we're satisfied with where we are, we'll put this to bed for now and not waste yeah, just, our time or Wendy's right. time anymore doing anything. Just more mention research. it to yeah. Wendy. That, yep. I mean, she said she was kind of leaving it open, yep. but to discuss it, so. Yeah, that I, I, to I'm me. just too nervous because one of the reasons the Hampshire Trust is better for us is because we do have regular monthly meetings that, and, 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 and what and you do is you can, you can there. have some flexibility potentially to mitigate some kind of big spike. Barbs are voting now. And, and, um, and one of the things that's very important, which, you know, I, I, I'm surprised that the, the, our trust doesn't emphasize more, is the amount of money that they have for catastrophic injuries. You know, say something had gone wrong with your leg, or if you're in the shirt, you know, these other people have a limit of a million, two million. Our trust would go up to several million, four or five million, you know, if, it, if an individual needed that. That's you know, great. And that's part of their whole thing. Uh, the other part is the, the whole investment of it. You know, when they make money, it's nobody makes money from that except for the units. It's it handed back the, in, you know, maintaining the low cost of the insurance. The cost down. And, and it, the people that are running it have done a real good job. And, yeah. You know, well, Maya is good. the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, that's why we switched our property insurance to them yep. because we have been actively pursuing right. discounts and stuff but several years ago it wasn't it was the rates had gone up so much yeah. that we could find private insurance better for sure. us as a town so we had switched back yeah. um so i mean you have to keep looking but yeah absolutely um, I, but i just i don't want i mean we've been talking no, about I'm this not for a while and i just yeah I no just I, I agree with you kept, no yep. I, I, I agree okay sounds good so let's just make sure we tell wendy that we're not interested yeah. um yeah. Okay, did you have anything else? Not at the moment. I mean, okay. I'll probably fill something else in or I, Wendy will tell me I forgot something, I'm sure, but. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but so. That's okay, that's let's, fine, we'll let's, keep going. Um, let's take the two things, I mean, the three things that we have to sign. So yes. if you wanna make a motion for the um, restaurant. Oh, so I make a motion to approve the um, uh, common uh, vitulers license uh, for Aban Payne. Okay. And uh, for 25 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass, for um, fiscal year 2018. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. All no. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'll sign here. Yeah, we'll sign that. Do you want to make a motion on the Mosquito District to accept our grant money? Yes, so I make a motion to accept the uh, Efficiency Regionalization Grant Award for the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District formation 
in the um, oh, amount right of $150,000. Oh, Second okay. item. And I think this is just for you to sign. Anyways. Oh, okay. And then there's one other item in here that I'll just pull out and then put back in so I don't lose it. Okay. So we're receiving the grant? Mm -hmm. um, we're the lead town on it, okay. yeah. Right. Um, do you want to second, second that? that motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Nope. None. Um, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Um, okay. Let me... Uh, you need Oh, I guess. So. Oh, I, yeah. I think I said I. I, I. Okay. I just was trying to figure out where to sign. I don't want to screw this up. Okay. Was there more than one place? I don't think so. Um. It might have been. Was it, oh no, she put a tab, so I think that was it. That was it. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is something different too. Actually. Oh, okay. That's, that's a different item. But I'm oh, keeping oh. it all in her oh, folder okay. so I don't mess right. it up. And I can give it back to her in the same spot. Th um, thank you, by you the welcome. way, for getting all these directions. Sure. Um, I do have another item. Oh, okay. This is for the, uh, fr we, we need to vote and sign the um, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Um, this is for the. Landfill inspection landfill report. Landfill inspection report. Okay. So. Um, so I move we accept and sign it? Um, I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So um, I think maybe you're the only one that would need to sign because uh, there's not a bunch of spots, so I'll leave that for you to sign as well. Okay. Trevor, so are you keeping the folder? I'll give this back. Yeah, to you. sure. Thank you. And then I have also one more item, which would be the um, revised. Um, Utility billing detail commitment one for Frontier Regional School for the um, sewer. So I make a motion to sign the 2018 commitment number one Frontier Regional School sewer. Um, this is a revised bill. one, right? This is the revised one. Okay. Do you I'll wanna... second the motion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the. Um, Solid waste. Solid waste inspection. You know, you weren't talking about that, right? What about no. this? Is there a Sugarloaf Cemetery fence project? Yeah. yeah I've got one more oh. item here. Let's see if I can find that. I think this is similar to the uses oh. were similar to last year's. There are a bunch of spots for you to sign for the grant. Oh, okay. I wonder what I had you sign. Hang on one sec. Oh man. No, I had you sign that. Before we go any further on this, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Wait, I, I one more thing here. I, I felt that I went not out of my way, but I made it abundantly clear last year about the sewer bill for the schools, and it seemed to get dropped. How can we address this now, or make oh. it clear with whomever it may be that? Well, you know. oh, Trevor, why don't you talk about how well, you have I, Bob Lesko take I did, pictures? I did go see Bob Lesko. Yep. He did say he spoke with you as well. Yep. Um, I went to see him on addressing a couple of things for Deerfield Elementary School, the flooring mm -hmm. and the clocks and some hardware Since locks. Then. And then while I was there, we, I brought up the sewer bill. Yep. And, and he said that, so he's taking a photo every... Um, Every month, he takes a photo of each one, and he's now documenting the readings on each of the units. So we'll have that going forward. We still are at an impasse on trying to get um, somebody from the water district to notify uh, when they're going to read the bill, so read, read the meter, so that we could at least have something close, you know, as far as, you know, if, he, if they just got a heads up. So Bob just said, if I had a heads up of when they're coming to read it, then I can read the other one, and but he'll have all the stuff anyway. So as long as it's somewhere close to the beginning of the month, you know, we'll we'll be pretty accurate. But somehow we've got to figure a way to. Well, I think the way that works, it is kind of a little loose situation. But the uh, the water department goes out in the spring and the fall. Yeah. And they they have particular days, but you know they do bend if the weather is bad sure. or if they have emergencies and stuff like that, but it's usually pretty consistent. 
I did speak with Roger about this. Oh, you did? And, yeah. Uh, and he also said if the school puts in another uh, meter reader on the outside of the building like the water department has for their curtain, they would not mind reading both of them at the same time. Oh, that'd time. be wonderful. And, they, and, and Roger alluded to the fact that they really wouldn't mind even going into the building to read that second meter. The problem is it isn't like the old days. You just can't walk into the school. Right, right. So, you know, now by having somebody identify them, letting them in, bring them through the right. school, you know, it, now it's a burden on the water department. Bob said so. that he would pay for and put on if there was some sort of contraption that he could do that. Yeah. He would he be happy to do that. To so um, I, I'll follow up with Roger. I, I, I don't. If there's a model I talked with him about so many things. I, I, right. I don't really remember it. if we discussed whether or not he was going to. Um, Provide Bob with a source of who, right. who just is, who, what meters they use in the you know the right the right the mechanism yeah. so we can read it. That'd be I'll, great I'll if we could to get that again. together. I'm happy to help. That would be need. wonderful. Only because this has been a oh, yeah. problem. I mean, yeah. They feel like a lot of their water is going on in the fields um, and not down the sewer. But it'd be great to have it. I mean, I think we really need to get some accurate readings. So yeah, and, and I mean it. it it benefits everybody, you know. Absolutely. We don't have to be put in the middle of trying to figure out who or what, you know, and the school pays, you know, their fair share. And yep. If it's less, it's, it's great. It's le know. right, right. So. That'd be great. Yep. Um, one one last item I have is um, to award the uh, the contract for the um, fiscal 18 Sugarloaf Cemetery number two uh, fence repair yep. to um, Fitzgerald Fencing, Fencing. Inc. Yep. And. Uh, that, uh, let's see, I guess it's in the amount of $6,490. This is, we're waiting to cut down some trees, right? We got that all done. So this is the final final bit of this, in which I think I've had you sign already. Oh. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we uh, make, a, uh, make a motion to award and to sign the contract for Fitzgerald Fencing for uh, Sugarloaf Street Cemetery number two. I'll second the motion. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so are you okay. sure I got that? Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to just note here. So this was, I just wanted to know, are you noting who's doing what? Um, no, no, I did not. Okay. I, or I, had, or I had written so, so many notes I know. prior Let me to, just I do couldn't that. do that. So the you load, need to make I've a motion and, T and who motioned T. and who second. And then um, the landfill, that was T. And then the, we haven't talked about, and then the grant was T. I've made the motions. He's and then T. Okay. Just want to make sure I have all these. Were there any others? No, I think that was it. Okay. So I've got all that for her. But I do need you to. These are the signatures for the uh, grant. And I, I'm pretty sure I got yes. all of them. Did you? Yeah, because okay. um, I'm going to pass these back to you. You keep okay, that all yeah, straight, yeah. Trevor. We're going to have to give you a raise. You're doing two jobs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, we're not used to that? Right, exactly. Hey, I usually am the one, but I, I had so many notes on my thing that I couldn't take Great. notes. Great. Nope, that's good. Okay. okay. And then we, uh, we voted this. This was Conway um, Board of Health comments. This was. Um, Okay. Moving on. Um, uh, we, I think we have to vote to accept the resignation of Key. Yes. So yeah. just so all are aware, um, Key Eno uh, resigned from executive assistant in the selectman's office. She went back to Hatfield. And I had some other... So just to talk about that a, a little bit, um, yes. Yeah, so I make a motion to accept her resi uh, Key Eno's resignation. I'll second the motion. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. I'm just curious because I want to learn. What if we didn't accept it? I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand why. I can't you force a person, especially right. on their. I get it. So I think she still saying. she still was on probation anyway. So. Yeah, I'm not I don't, sure. I don't think that. But I guess I was, do you understand, or can you explain to me why the technicality that we have to vote on it and just say we accept it? Or? One of the reasons is, is you reason why you accept the res resignation effective 
Oh, we have to amend this. Effective um, J January 2nd, oh, 2018. Yep. Is because you end the benefits? I see. Um, so, I, so I want to revise my motion. Um, I move to accept the resignation of Key Eno uh, from the executive assistant position effective Monday, January 22nd, 2018. I'll second that as well. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. I'm glad okay. I asked. Yes. No, no, um, yes. Because the reason why you do this is, you know, because if, if, say the person, say she slipped and fell somewhere, she could claim that Thank she's you. still an employee of Deerfield and she's under a health insurance and I understand. all that okay. kind of stuff. And you're, and you're, uh, and the reason why you do it on an effective date is because mm -hmm. then your vacation days and all that kind of stuff is cut. Okay. Yeah. Right. One other topic um, was the was the Franklin County uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments um, District Local Technical Assistance. Um, she uh, Wendy had asked for an extension. They, they really didn't have enough time for us to kind of look this over. What we have done is um, economic development last year, and we're waiting um, for that report from. Uh, I want to say Ms. Jennifer. Um, Jessica. Name. Jessica, thank you. Um, she's working nice. Yes. So she was just um, backed up a little bit and was kind of getting, you know, wrapping up that final report to us. And we, one thought was to extend that. But we want to think about other things that maybe we'd want to um, apply for, see if we could get a grant for. I, don't, I didn't really have enough time to go through this. I just wanted to mention it a little bit. Wendy was going to look at it again when she got back. and maybe have a discussion next well, week on um, any other items that we thought were important. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, we had um, went to, um, you know, the deep mass DOT to talk about complete streets mm -hmm. at the MMA and how, what are the final hurdles for the, um, so that we can compete um, our, the new requirements that we have not met. We met some of them, but we have not met all of them. And um, so I'm wondering, um, you know, it would be tie Elm Street into it. Yeah, yes. but also how I mean r Really, that's what we need we is, do. To, is to help us Write some of the well, it's not to write because Wendy can write grants and she writes better than most people So I'm that's the mm -hmm. writing of the actual grant. It's just You know you have these who just like this MVP program you got to have someone so they can manage the meeting so they can send in all the paperwork to the mm -hmm. states say yes you've done all this stuff even though we've known we've done all this stuff mm -hmm. you just have to certify that you've done all this stuff and so to me that's the kind of technical assistance we want yeah is so someone come in and say this you know we, we adopted at. the complete streets pro thing mm -hmm. we had all this the all the meetings and we did but all we this, haven't applied for anything but and, we haven't applied for anything because they have two more or three more requirements that we haven't met if we and, could dig through that because I I know we've I don't know how many times I've said this in public yet but I really want to get focused on downtown Elm, downtown on Elm, Elm Street, Street on sidewalks on lighting I picked up a lot of details information from vendors on lighting we talked about maybe sh sure. you know bringing them down a little bit doing yep. led lights so i've got a lot of data on that for kevin or whoever kind of puts this all together um you know just to aesthetically make that and functionally I, maybe put um, wires on the ground if we can or whatever we can do to clean right. that up and coming in the thing is i we i haven't been too involved with the street lights and stuff but the little bit that i've heard you know the power company kind of takes advantage of you know Oh, yeah. what lights we have, how much we pay, and stuff like that. They so do. even, I mean, I don't know how much these ornamental lights are, but right. I have a strong feeling that, you know, even though we're going to have to pay money for them in a short amount of time, you know, we're going to own them, you know, opposed to yes. forever and ever paying the power company. And recoup with the LED lights. The, yeah. um, the, the people that I talked to, there was a company called, uh, just bear with me one sec, there was a company called... Um, <clears throat> Ameresco, and they do, they did a lot of uh, they do a lot of things in, in towns, and they ha he said he'd be happy to come out and talk. But they have um, he said there's um, rebates and then programs you get with the energy company. He said now is a great time to do street lighting. I just brought it up to him about that we were thinking about doing that. He said now is a really great time. Be happy to come out and talk to you about what what can be done and. 
getting rebates and discounts on different lighting and LED lights and so it, it seemed it like because there was not just him, there were several there were other several vendors, others, and, I've got and some it good seemed books and here. they were all truly saying the same thing that this was the time to do it. Yeah. So I have not, I don't have actual company names, but I could do some research. One of the things that I was thinking about <clears throat> with the street lights is uh, some of them have the capability of having uh, solar panels on them, mm -hmm. and the, the mm -hmm. if you will, the top of the crown is incorporated a solar panel. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know this, how much they are, but if you were going to even pay two or three hundred dollars more for a light that had that ability, you know, it seems like a lot, but running conduit underneath all the sidewalks is Wicked a very expensive, expensive thing, too. Yeah. You've got to go under the road. So, you know, that, I think I'll, I'll start looking for some, some yeah. lights that can do that and as I've well. And I've got a lot well, of data I know here. Well, I know you're probably <clears throat> going to freak out, but I did tell Brenda that... We wanted to have um, a Selectman's Initiative page in the budget because we wanted to put um, the sidewalks that we voted sure. on separately yeah. and that we wanted, what was the other thing? <coughs> I, there was three things. Uh, you, um, well, the uh, development uh, director, but there was, I mean, the development person. Oh, the economic development planner. And, and uh, well, what was the second thing? Not the auger monster. No. No, something different. Something different. Oh, man. I'm, I got too much notes here. Yeah. But anyways, there was three things that we we're going to... Oh, the tree trimming. Oh, right. The extra amount for... The for tree trimming. Cleanup. So we wanted... Can we get that kit? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You're welcome to all this. Um, and then there's this. We picked up all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I got a bunch more over here, too. So. Um, but... The problem is with Kevin's budget, he returns money every year, but it's not enough to do, like, the sidewalks. And so what happens is the sidewalks never get done. So I decided we would, since there's a couple things that are not in the budget line item, um, the, the thing that we, this is where you're, I think this is what we're talking about. And there's one more, too. Yeah, then there's smaller lamps yeah. that kind of sit down, and then there's cement or different types yeah. of poles. Yeah, um, but and some of these are solar. But... Um, we we wanted to set this aside as a separate line item um, that's not in Kevin's budget, so it doesn't like um, make his budget out of whack from the year before. But would um, you know pay enough, have a set aside enough money for the sidewalks, you know, a section of the sidewalk every year. And if mm -hmm. we want to do a section of the sidewalk every year, we just have a separate separate bo box for that. Yeah. yeah. There, uh, there was Kip. There was another thing I thought you might be. Interested. This was for sewer pipes and relining them. I the, think on the inside, and they do all kinds of. We different we were trying to find the auger monster kind of stuff. Yeah, I didn't see that. And this is that. what. But we Let's, came up with this, and, and I thought this. I would rather invest in this kind of stuff, aligning our pipes, rather than having to do the infiltration. I mean, the filtration thing for the phosphorus and the nitrogen. I thought. Wow, instead of spending $6 million for that stuff, why don't we do something like this? Then there was... Um, the, I, you know, this, this might be good. In it some locations, some this not. This is the same outfit that... I wonder if it's the same outfit that runs the... Uh, they do a couple of other things, like tank maintenance, yeah. concrete assessment management But, program. you know, um, the problem is neither... Trevor, I had a, a lot of information. And not very technical. I'm not I very mean, technical that's, with this. That's stuff, all right, but. because this type of product where they spray in, you know, I don't really know. I'd have to t talk with them. But, you know, if, you, if you're lining the pipes, if there's big breaks and stuff, that's not going to Correct. fill right. that. Correct. Know? But this type of application is exactly what we can use in these uh, aeration tanks if we right. continue that use. And, yep. you know, there's there's other ways. Um, I, I, I can't remember them all, but... There was something called a bubbler. It's a different yep. type of aeration. That's right. And stuff like that. Yeah, no, instead so of that spinning you, thing all the time. But this is exactly what, this type of coating is exactly what those concrete tanks need because it will stop the degradation of the concrete. Yep. And it's, it's a, it's yeah. a much and cheaper it, way of well, doing Well, and it's a spray in place kind of thing. Exactly. So it's just rehab versus, yep. Yep. Um, you know, yep. having to do anything replace. Yeah. And, and, it, and I, all I could think about is, oh, man, maybe this would. Like, yeah. And the one other thing Go. I picked up out there for yeah. Kevin was um, the Boston <coughs> Council, Boston Police Commission Council or something. They, they, that's I think that's where John gets all the police cars from on that bid thing, and that's all they used to do is cars. But now they do heavy equipment like the um, yep. 
trucks. Yep. So I gave it to Kevin to look at because Patriot was one of their vendors. Right. So I didn't know if there was any benefit to going through that. So I got that info for him and gave that for him to look at. I, I, I was doing some research over the last couple of days and I discovered something that I was looking at these um, single axle dump trucks like the town currently uses and I was quite surprised at the price that Kevin had put in. And so when I started calling <clears throat> and looking for these trucks, I, I heard the same numbers and, and I was taken back by that. And then two guys, I don't know if it was a, a slip or the way it's, they all, they both said to me, you are calling about a municipality. And I said, no, because I wasn't I was calling for right. myself to get information. Yeah. Whole different ball game. It really? burned me up, yeah. What it was, <clears throat> the trucks that are given to municipalities have a lot of different equipment in them. <clears throat> Not that you can't do the same thing for the private sector. One of the, the way they went about selling this, or they were telling me, is that, well, if it's from a municipality, you don't have to t pay the federal excise tax which is 12% of the cost of the truck. So it can add $30,000 to the cost of the truck. Wow. But what they do is in lieu they of that, add on they add all this other you stuff on me. it. Oh, no, no. Oh, that's, and they, that's what they terrible. sell it is, you know, you're, you're saving this tax, which is true, the towns don't have to pay it. But, but you're buying all this, all this other this, all this other stuff. And I said, so how do we go about putting this wing plow on without this? Oh, well, they just have a one-step lever for this. And, you know, I was just, I was troubled by it, you know? Hmm. So, yeah. but more anyways. research needs to be done then, huh? Yeah, I, I was... I maybe, was, maybe the Patriot yeah, might... He was going to, uh, Kevin said he was going to bring a guy up to discuss yeah. that from Patriot, I mean, maybe but they maybe we be, could ask him. Yeah, what's yeah. I don't know. On, what's the difference? God, that's pretty sleazy. Mm. Well, it, it, it's just a different way of marketing, I guess. That's it's true. That's you put it. They're making yeah. money. Okay, um, before we, the next item on the agenda is our budget, which we need to go to. But yes. um, I just, let's skip down to new business, because that will what's just take two. Card? Okay, yes, it will just take two seconds. Okay. On November, November 5th, through the ninth, um, I'm hoping that you will both support us participating in a Vigilant Guard. This is the National Guard um, exercise for um, the state, and and two days of that exercise will be here on the Deerfield River. And um, fortunately, the Hard Knocks was canceled because mm -hmm. what happened is FEMA. Was, it was Blueberry. a FEMA exercise, and, and even though they said they wanted local participation, and I was, they came to the Homeland Security Council back in a whole year and a, and a half ahead of time, and I, you know, gave them all my contact information and was willing to go to meetings and all that kind of stuff. They, their whole scenario, everything was, you know, just, we got nothing out of it. I mean, it was turning out that even though we were in the planning meetings and stuff, they were not making it um, real. So, um, Dennis, it does it do? well, well, this is a, an exercise. This is a multi-million dollar exercise by the National Guard, and, and it's National Guard of all New England, and but it's our whole state National Guard. And um, so Dennis Neer, who is the retired fire chief from Orange, is temporarily working um, up at, um, Charlemont for six months to help him out. And um, so he's volunteered to go to all the meetings right now. Mm -hmm. And um, and he's also on the REPC, and I'm on the, you know, I'll go to the mm -hmm. REPC. And um, so the REPC has actually um, voted to support this. And it seems like they're going to have a flood kind of scenario that will really help us practice, you know, I'll our plans. Practice. So I'm hoping you won't mind us participating. I, I don't know, um, obviously, if, you know, for two days, there will be expense in the sense that, you know, if we have police and highway people and EMS, that that will, you know, you'll have some extra shifts. But I don't, in, most of the costs will be the planning, going to the planning meetings, which I will do with Dennis and, you know, just participating. But it will give us an opportunity to practice our plans, look at the evacuation that we are talking mm -hmm. about today, evacuation plan. Communication is the hugest thing. And it will give us leverage 
and this is what's so important, is to give us leverage to complain if we still don't have an emergency communication plan with Great Hydro, who owns the dams now. Because this is really serious. Um, I know both of you are brand new, but in our SEMP plans, our emergency plans for the town, we still have TransCanada numbers that make nothing, you know, phone numbers that yep. are no good. They don't own the dams anymore. It's a lawyer and the dam operators. There's no apparatus well, anymore. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So even if you have the dam operator's phone number, if we have a flood where it's going into savages and fields and everything like that, what do you do? Well, you, you no, you're in, supposed to you have a warning. Say a, a dam oh. failed, okay? Yeah. They are not. They have no notification plan to us as hmm. towns. To tell us you have four coming. or five hours that it's coming down. That 30-foot wall of water. Have that long. No, well, it depends on which dam. Yeah, if it's obviously. Terrible. It's but I'm, it's no, no, no. Problem. I'm talking about the Harriman Dam. Oh. Uh, the one in Shelburne would yeah, flood, but it wouldn't be hour. like a 30. Yeah. It wouldn't be the 30-foot wall of water that no. came down with Irene. Okay, the Harriman Dam, everybody down here is flooded. But that's why it's so serious. But they also own the Connecticut Dam. So if the Moore Dam went on the Connecticut, yes, you have a lot, many more hours. I forget the number of hours. But you still would have, all, all of us on River, everyone on River Road would be flooded. The S Sunderland is gone. And there's no emergency communications. This is really serious. I have been, I was, on this in May, when the license transferred, FERC mm -hmm. transferred the license with absolutely no inputs Emergency from stake, stakeholders, no requirements, no nothing. And um, Gray Hydro keeps saying, we're, we're getting it together, we're getting it together. They promised it in the fall, they promised it by December, and here it is, the end of January, and we still have nothing. So this is very serious. We're just lucky no events have happened. Yep. I mean, we had an event October 30th, um, but it, you know, it wasn't that bad. You you got you yep. were watching the gauges. Yep, I get the text. Um, you know, it never it got never got beyond twenty eight thousand CFS. Well, this last rain was right. That was up to fifteen five, but it wasn't. That's, not, that's not It has serious. to get up around thir when you get 30. between thirty and thirty five. That's you're, uh, you're over Mill Village and you're up on five and ten. Right. But that's what I mean. There's no we. By the time it gets the gauge reading in West Deerfield, it's, it's too, too late. late. Yeah. We, we've got to get be able to get people out. People need people need to know that you know you're going to move Cold animals. Yeah. Cold red's got to go out. We have no. They have no notification. A hurricane coming up up the coast. Do we have? We don't know if they are because it's profit driven. Have they? Have they dropped, have the they dropped the levels down to the absolute lowest level so that right. they have That's the most not, capacity? We. I mean, you kind of put those things together, and I mean, we know about hurricanes when they start off the coast of South mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, but by the time they get up here, we have plenty of warning. Right. But to your point, I mean, you can't call them and say, look, we have a storm coming, lower the water. That's, That's not true, because I would call TransCanada's 24-7 um, emergency um, center up in Calgary, Canada, and I would ask what level have they taken down their reservoirs? Wouldn't that not be the state and the Army Corps of Engineers along if with they those do people? Not, because they're not going to. I'm just assuming. They're no, not but whatever. To you if I'm me. not satisfied with those numbers, I would call. I would call MEMA and say, "Look, they're not. They're not drawing down. This. I know this is predicted to be, you know, 10 inches of rain. I know from my experience that the the reservoirs are going to be full, and then MEMA would contact them, and and force them to bring them down, you know, would, would follow up on it, in other I, words. I, I guess my point is that there's a lot more qualified people involved in this than You'd us. You'd be surprised. Oh, yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> no. Right now, it's me with my little calling tree. I mean, it's no more than the PTA, and I mean, it's they, terrible. The Army Corps of Engineers has people in this vicinity that deal with that stuff, you know, in like Boston. And, and what are they doing? There's no plan, Kippy. There's no emergency anything. I have the phone numbers to the dam operators. That's it. And that's only because, you know, over the years I have some sort of relationship with, you know, you know calling people. But there's no, there's no infrastructure there at all. I mean, this is really serious. So anyway, so you don't have a problem with us participating, right? 
Um, no, it's only going to cost us the potentially shifts some shifts. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't, you know, the scenarios have not been developed, so I don't know. Not. But I but I want us to practice our EMS to practice, and I want our police and highway to practice, I, at a minimum. I, I kind of, it, I kind of feel that our EMS and highway. I mean, I think we're all set. By that I mean, if the water was over and we had to, you know, rescue people, there's limited things that we can do. Could we go in there with a big wheel well, motor and get people? Yes. No, no, no. What what you would you'd be practicing like road closures and. And you, you would have the EMS say, okay, um, Lower Road is flooded. You got, you know, what, what's your alternative route? You can't go over Stillwater Bridge. So then you yeah. go through Greenfield and you come down. I mean, yeah. it's minimal stuff, granted, but it, it's I, getting people I guess to it, think. To me, I, I, I'm going to give the people the benefit of doubt that they're smart enough to deal with those types of common sense things. Well, yeah, but you have to practice these kind of things, Kip. You know, that's, that's one of the... Well, the different you have plans that sit on the shelf and and if you don't really utilize them you never know it, are they truly going to work and the idea also is to identify areas of improvement and and the only way you can get areas of improvement is to actually do some of these things and said oh my god you know we should you got to you got to have shelburne control notify us that when we're coming up 5 and 10 that the road is closed at, at Cheapside, you could, that's not an alternative, you know, kind of thing. I mean, you've got to figure out these kind of things. That's why you practice. And, um, but anyway, I mean, you'll, it wouldn't be excessive at all. It's just that there will be, it won't be free. But I think we'll get a lot more out of it by participating because most of the costs of the exercise obviously is being picked up by the National Guard. But there's also, for the National Guard, you have to know your terminology. If you want to shut down um, Stillwater Bridge like we did in Irene and you want the National Guard to guard it until you get big Jersey barriers there and not the kind that people can drive around, then you've got to ask for a certain kind of National Guard unit. And part of that is for us to practice how, how do you utilize the National Guard and what can they do? And, and the National Guard is scripted very carefully in different kinds of units and it's very very important that you know exactly what the job is you want them to do so that you request the right unit because they send out people and they they're not allowed to do a different job they're, they can only do what they are supposed to be assigned well that in itself is a problem yes it is but it's it's a problem you got to work around guess, because they don't change it I mean, I mean Kip, like there's nothing these, you can do it's kind of like these TV commercials you know uh, you know, I'm just a monitor. I'm not the dentist, you know, that kind of thing. You know, if, if, you, if you call the National Guard for help and you say to these guys, hey, look at you We're stand flooding. in front of the bridge, don't let anybody cross it. Hi, geez, I don't do bridge crossings, you know. It's like, well, you know, that, that's crazy. I know. Rescue, I'm just telling over. you that you that's just, the way it is. Well, if it happens, call it me. Was, I'll park my backhoe across it was, so nobody can cross the bridge. Yeah, but that's, but that's why it's so important to practice these things so you are aware okay. of, of All right. What's these next different things. So, and we already did the um, sewer commitment. Yeah. So we're back up to the budget. Hand out to Trevor. This is nice stuff. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm not more. giving you a hard time, Kip, Come but on, it's, really, it's really important. Are, are we going to go into executive session to talk about the land? Um, we can go into executive session, but I think. Or do you want to do some budget? Well, I wanted to. Or, I wanted to finish in? up the budget as okay. much as we could to pass on to the um, finance want, committee. Do you want the finance committee to come out after, or do we want to meet another time? Or? Well, I mean, it's only eight o'clock. We yeah. could. We could, after we come out of the executive session, go into the finance committee meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you okay. want to do that? Yeah. In case there's right any, um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, to me, there's worthwhile trying to have some conversation. Uh, it, it, that means potentially less meetings later on. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to, what, what part of this uh, do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about this compensation thing now? Or? Um, well, we got the compensation things go, uh, out here. So yep. do you want to, why don't we start with that? Okay. Uh, do you want to start, Kip, or? Um, 
Well, I'll, I'll give you my two cents. Um, I'm not sure which one this is because there's been so many of them. Um, but this is, looks like it shows us the 18 wages and then the proposed 19 wages. And there's a percent difference. You know, one is with a 2% cost of living plus a step. And the other one is a 2% instead of an increase. Only a 2%. Only, only, only a 2%. And a 2.5%. Right. Um, the top one's combined. I think it's 55,000. <laughs> it would affect you know, 20 people, I guess. I don't think you have this either. This, this is hot. Yeah. Let's just two seconds. This I, I don't think you had this kept. This no, just came. No, I made him a copy. One oh, of okay. Yep. Um, this just came today, uh, mm -hmm. this afternoon, of, um, at the close of business. This is our local aid. Um, it, we are getting 292,467 versus 326, 337. But we are also getting charged $33,000 less. So the difference is um, 70,633. So basically it's, I mean, it's a decrease, but it's a fairly stable decrease, mm -hmm. so. De decrease from, from This last is year. the governor's budget, this okay. is not, yeah. I mean, the, the house, money. yeah, the house will come through, and we usually end up with more money when, when you get... So what's I get to do this with is the house, schedule? No, 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 but the, I'm just saying mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. governor's budget came through, okay. and that once the house comes, we usually get a little bit more. So we'll, it, it's very stable, and if anything, we'll break even or get a little bit more by the end of the okay. deal. So okay. that's a relief, because that... We were not sure where we were going to be. Okay. So, right. um, and and what that is is basically um, our school choice is down seventy three thousand. And this this is quite a difference here. But um, this is I'm not sure. I meant to. Oh, I forgot to ask John. Oh, we should ask John. Now. Yeah, we you get veterans and elderly exemptions. Last year, this might be the actual 25107, and this might be a projected. So, but I don't know why it's such a difference. The state reimburses you when you have people apply for the senior exemption yep. or the veterans exemption. The state reimburses you. That's and good. I don't know why our reimbursement is 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 basically a fifteen thousand dollar difference. I don't know if people Reimburse just people didn't do it. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Mm -hmm. It could it could be two or three people that decided not, not to, to do, do it, it, and it's a difference. But that was a question. I think I know that uh, I'm not sure about the veteran, but on the senior one, I know that it was an uh, an income level yes type thing. So maybe if someone made more money, they weren't eligible. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe okay. they passed. I don't know. Right. I mean, it could be. Could be something like that yeah. too. If it's um, fifteen thousand, it's probably just. I mean, we're really talking only a couple houses. We're probably. losing a lot more in yeah. the greatest generation. Yeah. yeah. Every day. I know. So it's. I was going to check it out because that was a de quite a decrease. Okay. So Back the big, to the compensation. So the, big, the big question is whether we do a step this year and and the two percent cola that the personnel committee recommended. recommended or we do something different. Um, and you're really, so I, I guess I'm having a hard time deciding what to do and I felt we should talk it out a little bit. Um, you know, part of me tries to relate it to the private sector, kind of what I'm used to. And then the, then the other half, um, <coughs> The other half of me is trying to juggle between what we, you know, we have 75% of the town employees get paid a certain way contractually, and we have 20 or so people that are kind of left in, in non-contractual. So I want to be fair to both, um, and I also <coughs> want to be fair to our taxpayer. Um, so I've been struggling a bit, honestly, with... Um, I know the history has been we do a step every, you know, every year people move up a step because they've gained more experience and they're better at their job and, 
you know, um, so that, that's, I think that's been the history of how this goes. And then we haven't done a COLA since 2009, is that right? Yeah. So COLA would be just kind of adjusting that. I, we spent a lot of time last year, um, a lot of people put a lot of effort into kind of revising our comp schedule plan. And for everyone out in TV land, that's kind of the sheet that kind of gives you all the steps depending on the qualification and then the years people have been here. And what was happening in the past was um, that plan, compensation schedule plan, hadn't changed since 2009. So we were running into um, butting heads with the personnel committee and they were upset with the, with the select board because we were hiring in people at a higher step than our bylaw says. Our bylaw says start at step one or two, probably just one and you one, move up yeah. from there. Um, and we were, just to get qualified people or get anybody to apply or to hire anybody, we were hiring them in at four or three or not, not at one because our comp schedule hadn't, hadn't kept up with, you know, wh where the cost of living and everything was. So everybody spent a bunch of time. We looked at that. We set everybody, it, we, we were able to adjust the comp schedule plan and it was hard because you've got people that have been here many, many years and, and have made some decent money, and then you have other people who have just started. And so you're trying to capture everybody's pay in this, in this chart, and then to make it fair so that if they move up a step every year, it's kind of it's equal as they, as they go up through. And um, so we've got that set. Now, if we, um, if we don't pay a COLA, uh, which is a cost of living, and that's based on a bunch of different studies kind of combined, and that's kind of like how much everything costs. Your, if I have this wrong, your bread, your gas, or whatever it might be, kind of goes into a chart, and everything has kind of gone up about 2%. So if we take our compensation plan and apply that 2% across the board, that keeps that plan current so we don't wind up where we were. Um, having that plan becoming obsolete year after year. And then the other part of it is if people, you know, are here year after year, they're gaining more experience, more knowledge, and they move forward and move up a step a lot. Well, and that's how 75% of our employees are paid. Um, our school teachers, the police department, um, all con contractually move a step each year. And if they gain um, educational or professional development, there's different adders for, for moving up on that. So I've been struggling thinking, you know, well, does everybody just automatically get a, a step raise every year? Um, and why is that? And is that fair? Um, is it the right thing to do? And then um, can we do more of a, a merit-based, you know, did you really, you know, work really hard this year and now you're, you're going to get a raise or you've found a way to save money or you found a way to to get um, to get the town to save money or do a job better or come up with a uh, you know a new way of doing things to be more productive, um, better off for the taxpayer, better off for the town, safer, whatever it might be, um, then maybe you would move up a step. But um, at MMA, the conference this weekend, I went around to ask many different communities and not a lot of time to get a lot of answers. But there is an organization that. Um, Massachusetts Municipal Plan Personnel, Personnel Association. Association. One of those acronyms. We, we, we did, so it was a good we conversation. We do belong, and it's a good conversation, and there are many ways, many people do it many different ways, and it is, it's not an easy thing to figure out because everything's public. Everybody knows what everybody makes. Um, so it's, it's hard to do an evaluation, uh, merit-based evaluation, but if, um, I still kind of in my, gut feel like that's the right way to go. I just don't know if I have enough knowledge right now to move in that direction this fiscal year. Um, so my inclination is to move forward with the personnel board's um, recommendation, but I, or I would be, you know, kind of, I kind of feel like I would, I would maybe drop back the COLA a bit, but then that kind of hurts our chart. So I'm still, I'm still kind of up in the air on this a little bit. Well, as Trevor said, we went around and talked to different towns. We talked to the MMPA, and um, we really 
made an effort to discuss stuff. And my problem is I, I know the steps. I would love to have us have a merit-based system. I mean, for the most part, we have wonderful, good employees. We do. And, and we want to retain them. And, um, you know, and they are very productive. And reward them. And, then, and reward them. And if we truly are going to save money, having good long-term employees are going to be the ones to mm -hmm. help us save money. Right. Um, but I honestly can say that I do not feel comfortable not giving a step this year and saying to our employees, we're going to switch over to a merit system, not budgeting any money for training, not budgeting any money for implementation of a merit system, not even having the merit system at all. I mean, we have struggled with this. I mean, John Petroic Sr. couldn't verify we've had multiple, multiple meetings over the years. We've struggled back and forth. Um, you know, you got to have the right system because the right system will truly be merit-based. But otherwise, you're going to end up just being a checkoff system that people just automatically get steps anyway. Um, and it, so it's complicated, it's, and, and it's not fair to our employees to say that we're switching to a merit-based system and not have the tool ready to go and not budget any money for that so that supervisors and and everybody can be trained of the system because it to be a true evaluation system the employees themselves must be participatory so we have to have training for the employees as well so they can participate in their job evaluation and 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 then you have to implement it and it's not easy and uh, and you can verify with the discussions there was no nobody had a good system that they were satisfied with and and the smaller the town went um, I mean we yes we were talking to some larger towns that were you know had the ability you know to be more anonymous maybe but as the smaller towns went and and smaller meaning like 10,000 15,000 so they have a lot more employees than us their complaint the the complaints went up nobody had a real good system and and so but I, that just reinforced my not being comfortable with not doing a step this year and telling our employees you know that's not correct but I at think, the same time I think we sustain move that direction yeah. we need to move that direction but I mean for, there's a lot more research that needs to be done and more work well for for fairness to our taxpayer and well, see, that's my other complaint. I'm always talking about being sustainable and all that kind of stuff. So then, okay, so we cut back on COLA, but then our comp schedule is out of whack. Right. And, and so I don't, I mean, I'm on the, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what to do really either. I'm curious if we could. Carolyn, I couldn't help but overhearing you as I was walking out. And it sounds like the same discussion that we just went through. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Oh, just oh, in there. <laughs> so what? So exactly. we're hoping to we're hoping to merge exactly. this conversation. Well, later we we're supposed on. to have a merging conversation because obviously, you know, we have to be sustainable, and I keep saying that over and over again. But we're really talking about on on the employees. It, it's a one point five eight percent change on the budget, and so it's within. One of the things that I think is very important is that if you're going to change the step increases, if, if you're going to eliminate them, that employees that are being hired need to know that. Right. Right. Okay? Of when course. When you hire an employee, they're expecting I'm that move if up. they do the job, they're going to get a step increase every year. Right. But that's why I feel so uncomfortable, John, when we know we don't have a system already in place. To uh, not. To not do it. We need to have, we need to work on getting this merit system set up. And, uh, you know. Have, have we ever thought about hiring a consultant to? That's, that's how we started this whole thing. Yeah. We hired a consultant. Right. And, and we did the comp schedule. We did. The evaluate we we have the evaluation pages, but we never were able to implement them, 
and we never had the tr enough training to make the implementation possible. That's why I'm saying it's very difficult. It, you know, we spent two or three years in a row, and we actually, you remember Don Jacobs. He's the one that we hired. Yeah. So we have current job descriptions. We have the comp schedule. It's not like we don't have, we just don't have the evaluation tool that is correct for us. And it's very difficult. I mean, Trevor and I really did spend time talking to people and trying to figure out how we could find a tool. And, and it, nobody, it seemed like nobody really had the right one either. And, and so a lot, they admitted that a lot of these evaluations are just checkoffs that it's an, it is, it's no different than what we're already saying is kind of an automatic thing. And, and the smaller the town you went, it seemed like, in my opinion, it seemed like people were more dissatisfied and it was more an automatic thing. Which what we're, tr you're trying to avoid that so that yeah. you could encourage, um, you know, initiate, initiate, an, initiative and, and, um, thinking about outside the box and all that kind of stuff and that you reward those kind of employees because our pie is pretty much the same mm -hmm. and we have to deliver more and more every year. So sustainability is huge and, and people, you're trying to, I don't know. I mean, this is why I'm, I, I don't know really what I to do. I want to hear Kip stops. Yeah. So. Well, I, when I look at this, um, I think that we also have a great bunch of people that work for the community. Mm -hmm. um, with the no exception doubt. of a few, a few assistant librarians, all of our employees make 200% above minimum wage currently. Mm -hmm. And that with the cost of living raise, I think that whether it's 2%, whatever, why one employee because they're new at it, only gets a $500 raise, and somebody that's been here long gets a $2,000 raise. I think that if you're going to do something like that, you pick a, you pick a fee, like 45 cents. Everybody gets 45 cent raise, regardless of what grade they're in. You just change that grade. And that way you're modernizing or upbringing your uh, whole compensation plan equally the same. Otherwise, you, you're totally wiping out your compensation plan because the people at the bottom get a 40 cent raise and the people at the top get a $2 raise. So that breaks all your people already past that step 10. And we have a couple of people that are step 10 plus. So what do you do? 11 plus plus or, you know, and. No, I think at the top, they only get cola. They only get cola because they're at the top they're end the of top. the scale. And then, but, it, but, but it still would, it, it, if you do it a 2% thing, it, it, it disproportionately changes that upper number constantly. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the way. So, I, the sorry, are I, you are you promoting? Are you promoting steps because no, the steps no, are no. not? I'm, I'm talking about one thing at a time. And, and oh, the whole, okay. The cost of, mm -hmm. And the reason I say that 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 same number, and I'm going to use 45 cents, is because it doesn't matter if Trevor's at the top and I'm at the bottom. Our gasoline costs the same. Our electric costs the same. Our, the cost of living that's gone up is the same for both of us. So by doing a percentage of that, the people at the bottom aren't faring as well and the people at the top are getting a bonus built into it. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Because the but percentage they, of their pay is more large. experience. They're but we're not talking about experience right now. We're talking about the cost of living. No, I know, so but if, but if uh, somebody is at a higher range, yeah. their, their raise would, would be higher. Because but we're talking about the cost of living adjustment. So the cost of living is the same for everybody. But, but so you're on Social Security, right? Some people get more or less on that, and they get a 2%. What's the difference there? That's, that, that I'm just trying to, I'm the percentage trying to is, is pretty close. I'm not sure, but I don't think, I don't think well, you can, work, what's the most you can collect on Social Security? $3,000? No thank goodness I'm not there yet, but. What's the most you can collect on Social Security? $3,000? Or is it 2500 or 2800 or? That, that you collect when yeah. you're retired? Yeah. Oh no, it's higher than that. It could it be anything, right? yeah. depending on how much you've oh, really? been in. And I thought, you know, I always thought that it was based on your last higher years, but that there was a cap on it. Oh, there, I think there is a cap. There's a cap, but it's higher than three thousand. Is it okay? But I'm just thinking of like. Uh, do you know about what the cap might be, John? So I can 
Get my point. Six sixty five hundred maybe. Really? So, so wow. it's, it's it's up there. So that it, wow. if you have somebody that's getting two thousand dollars a month and somebody mm -hmm. that's making sixty five, that's a four thousand dollar difference. That mm -hmm. percent. You know, but here we have people that are making you know thirty five to forty thousand, and we have people making seventy five to eighty thousand. So the, the thousands of dollars is what's the difference, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying. To some people, it's a forty cent raise and other people it's a two dollar raise so if you don't keep up and then if you keep changing that but then you give them a, then, that, then the next year so, now so you're talking four dollars so you're talking times. about a flat amount for a cost cola, of living right not a percentage right just a flat amount yep. yes the problem with that is that if you don't do a percentage yep. increase and do it across the board mm -hmm. you're you're New hires mm -hmm. is going to be a problem. Why would that be? Well, because you're not you're not giving them the, the correct amount. If you don't give them a percentage increase, you're not keeping up with the cost of living. You're not, you know, somebody I think just coming in at the bottom is not going to. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be a true two percent. It would be below that, but the people at the top wouldn't be getting a true. To, it would also be lower. It's only the people in the middle that would be closer, you know, to that true two percent. And that's kind of how I did that, because if you otherwise, what happens? And this is what happened with our compensation schedule: is that the bottom number goes up a much slower rate than the top number because their their number is so much bigger. So, like I said, the people at the bottom are going up, let's just say, in forty cent increments. And then it gradually gets bigger. But the people at top are going up in $2 increments. So our compensation schedule in two years would go from the top earner being $25 to be $41. You know, and yep. then we're going to have to rip the whole thing apart again. Except I don't understand that because, like, if you here at step nine, yeah. it's $19.16. Yeah. And step 10 is $19.89. But, but you're mixing the two together. That's the step. And I'm talking about the cost of living. You know. but, in yeah, but, but if you're taking a percentage of $19.16, right. 2%, yeah. and then you're talking about $19.89, no, 2%, no, 2% is not hardly that much money. What I'm talking about, the difference is, if you take 2, oh, let's go down here, take 2% of $15 mm -hmm. versus 2% of $39, that's where I'm talking about. But that's, so the, but that's this the, number is going to change much dramatic, faster will. than that number. And then, in just a matter of a few years, this is going to be up near fifty dollars, well, and we'll say, "Well, we can't only do Only if that, you so. do a two percent cola every year. I, I and because understand. Who knows what the but if, cost if, of living is? If in fact the cost of living goes up, that's why I, I just feel that a, a flat fee, a flat number, would it would increase all of these things equally. So you know, people coming but I think in. That's what the step does, right? That's more of an equal. But Kim, thing. what would you base it on? I would. You I would go. Enough, you throw a dart on the board. No, nope, I go. Number out of the year, fifty cents. I would. I was going in the middle of the schedule between forty and ten. But the whole mm. idea of a cost of living increase yep. is for cost of living, right. and that that percentage comes from the cost of living. your expenses. But, but my, and if you're living at, if but, you're used to getting paid sixty thousand dollars a year, and your expenses are at sixty thousand exactly. dollars a year. Exactly. Versus if you're used to getting paid twenty thousand dollars a year, your expenses are more. See, I mean, yes, gas and everything. Is, more, but. It's just wide open. No, you it's it's the same amount for everybody. No, you know. but, it, but but that's it more like represent a cost of living. Well, the, and the reason I thought that though, is because, it? like I said to Trevor before, when you go to buy gas, if you're at the top pay schedule and I'm at the bottom, we pay the same money for gas. So if our cost of gas went up, it's the same for both of us. If we buy heating oil and it's gone up, it's the same for both of us. Everything that we buy is the same. Just because you make more money, why should you make more on your cost of living? Because it truly doesn't cost you more than it does me. No? That's, but that's no? not that's the way the cost of living. Okay. So rich people, because they live a higher lifestyle and they go to more restaurants, they deserve more money. Welcome to capitalism. <laughs> okay, taxpayers, here you go. I'm John. This is my piece. So what was, did they, what, they decide anything in no. there? No, they deferred to you. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's, let's wait. You'll figure it out. 
All right. So well, let's well, let's let's go back to the steps. So it sounds like you have no problem with the steps. I have a big problem with the steps, but it doesn't matter. So I can't help you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Same discussion. There's no sense well, of wasting your time. No, I think just I do think what you're going to do because I think it's a valuable discussion. Yeah, but Kip, this is a valuable. It's, it, it is not a valuable, valuable discussion. It's not, it's not worth it. We're we're going to sit here for hours, and you're, you're going to just say this is what you think they deserve, and that's what's going to happen. I, I mean, I made my case, and this is what I think, and so I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted to understand what your case was. So your case is my to, case is that the cost of living for all of us is the exact same. It doesn't matter. I make a hundred thousand dollars, and he makes forty thousand dollars. When we pay our electric bill, we pay the same rate. When we buy gasoline, we pay the same rate. We buy bread and milk, we pay the same rate. The cost of living is the same for all of us. Because I live a higher lifestyle, I don't deserve more money so I can buy a Ferrari and he still has to drive his Volkswagen. I don't get that. In, 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 in the capital, and I understand in the capitalist world, but here we're trying to run a town and provide services for all of the community. Mm -hmm. And all of our communities don't have an, an open wall, and that's the, the fact. I agree with and, that. And that's, 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 that's what our so how, Kip. That's what we're talking about is being sustainable. But what I'm trying to figure so, out is how did you come up with 45 cents versus two percent? The reason I, mean, I, did, I went in the middle, where I took about 25 dollars. That's about in the middle, and took what two percent of that is, and then just apply it to this side and to the other side. So the people at the top aren't going to be getting as much as the, the people. The people at the top won't be getting a true two percent of the, their salary, but they would get more accurate cost of two percent of what it costs to live. Because when the government figures out our cost of living, they don't go and say to so Bill so wait and so wait. Buffett, hey, how much money did it cost you to live this year? They take the average person, what it costs them to live. So, so what you did is you took thirteen dollars and twenty six cents and nineteen dollars and eighty nine cents. No, I, I went down to the other side. I went to forty, and I kind of came toward the middle, and it was around so, twenty. So, did you start out with thirteen twenty six, and and the high end no, of I our went, scale is I went, twenty? I went right in between the two. I went right between the two, between the thirty. Thirty nine and, and the, and I came out to like it was twenty three. Or 22 or 20. that's that's how I did and you came up with 45 cents about 45 cents but Instead everybody of, can't have the same it's just because it's because that's not we, we, we live in America not Russia that's what we used to do before you know we did we said get yeah, richer or getting richer and poorer exactly poorer. and that's yeah you know, what happens is you figure out what the total cost is yep. that you're going to give for raises and then you divide by the number of people and come out with a flat rate, and everybody gets that. But why do we why do we treat seventy five percent of our town employees different than than twenty five percent of our the town? Because you're on school committee. I don't have control. We need to hire. <laughs> that's it. another part of it. We need. I can't make all the comp. I can't make all the uh, the negotiations we myself. Did that for years. We turn them on, flatten it out, so everybody gets the same. Well, that well, you did, but you did that, John. But then, but what happened by doing that? So the that police officers are getting a sixty percent. No, we fell backwards rate. because here we are hiring people in the middle. Because if we just do that, we don't ever add to this rate. But this does add to this it chart. Does. We kind of stayed where we were for since '09. But Trevor, right? that's why I'm saying if 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 there and I don't know. I'm just going to pick this number. Yeah. Let's just say from the top to the bottom, there's a fifty percent difference. If you add 50 cents to everybody's pay rate, there's still going to be that same difference. So all we did was update that we raised the lower amount and we raised the upper amount, but we did it the exact same. So the difference between this guy at step one and step 10, whatever it is, let's say there's a dollar difference. By adding that 50% all the way across, there's still that dollar difference. You haven't skewed the thing. So instead of doing a percentage, we just put a, a number on it, which would, but how do we know that would keep up with inflation? Well, we don't, but we can we can change that number every year. That's what I'm saying, and that way you're not destroying your compensation schedule. So people schedule. would go up a step every year, and then we would do an arbitrary number, or no, not an arbitrary, but no, you don't you don't have to do that. You you do, can just do say, the percentage of two percent of thirteen twenty six and two percent of thirty nine seventy eight. Um, bear with me one moment. So you said uh, thirteen twenty six. Is our, our step um, one, uh, step one, so grade 26, one. 26. 26. Well, what do you got for numbers? 26.5. 26 and a half cents. 
well, 26, 27 cents. It's 27 it's, cents, it's yep. 0. 0.52. So, okay. So 27 cents, and then do 39.78, which is a top of the scale. Step 10, grade, our top grade. Uh, that's, that's 80 cents. That's 80 cents. So half of that. So uh, 80 minus 27 is 53. Is, is that what you were asking? Yeah, is that how you came up with? Divided by two? Um, uh, that's about. It's like 26 yes. cents. But I, I came up with 45 cents. And what it does is it does give the people at the bottom slightly more than a 2%, but so, the people at the top get below a 2%. So they move it's a Of step. their salary. But it, I think it represents a more, a more accurate cost of living adjustment. Because so why do you think the government? I, I I'm hearing your point. I, why do you I, yeah, think the I'm government not having a does, problem necessarily. Well, why do you think the government does it that like, way? Like I said, the, the difference between the two is much closer, and that's why they can say two percent. They don't, like I said, they don't go and take Warren Buffett and Bill Gates's income. They go by the working class people, you know, and that's much lower, and that's why it's an even a number, hmm. you know. And that's why I asked John. I didn't. I didn't even believe it was as high as 65. But it, okay, so it's 65. But a lot of people, you know, get 1,500. So let's just say it's 1,500. Mm -hmm. So now you've got 5,000 to nothing. So the half is 25. You, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So and that's when the government says, all right, it's two percent for the average person. Are, you, so if we decide, you know. 45 cents or 50 cents, but something like that. Part of the issue is how that, do we, is that, so how does that, your guy is that going to mess this your guy up? At That's the, the only thing. Well, the guy at the top gets, what, 45 cents? The guy at the top but, gets 45 cents and the guy in the bottom gets 45 but cents. But he never, so he gets to the top and all he gets is 45 cents. For a raise. Well, that's this year. But, that's, a, that's how you. That's how I envision a cost of living raise that's fair for everybody, instead of going two percent. Because otherwise, but how do you hold on to people at the top? I mean, well, you, I'm not sure what you. So mean. Um, the guy gets to the top of the scale. He has no what, more. What, no, 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 no. You, you don't go ahead. Don't try not to confuse the cost of living with a promotion or the step increase. Those, mm -hmm. those are two separate things. And right. I didn't yeah, get to that point. No, I know. I'm, I'm just, kind of jumping ahead. So yeah. I, I imagine he gets that. So, so the person still jumps. Every, we changed the entire scale by 45, 45 cents, cents, 50 cents, whatever we have. A year. Okay. And that, that, but that also sets up next year. Now we have the same difference. So the grades are the same. The difference between the steps are the same. Everything's the same. It's just a higher number because mm -hmm. that higher number represents a cost of living adjustment. And, but it's even all the way across. Because if you do a 2%, like I said, in three years, the guy at the top, his rate of pay has gone up 6 $7 an hour. Then you're going to look and say, well, $50 an hour is too much. Now we've got to redo the compensation schedule well, all over again. at 2% yeah. at the highest, highest, the mm -hmm. highest we pay at the 10-year. Is 78 cents. Is 78 cents. 20. Or 80 cents. Or, 80 yeah, cents. 80 cents. Okay, so it's 80 cents difference. 2% is 80 cents. Well, it's yep. 79. Mm -hmm. 79, yep. 56. Yep. So, so that's 80 cents. And at the bottom, you're 27. It's 27, 27 cents. So I mean, I'm just I'm I'm looking at. I would like to do, be more. You know, I think it, it is hard to be at the lower end. So I mean, I don't really have a problem with that, I guess. But does that screw up our comp scale? I, I'd like to talk to a few more people about it before okay. voting on it. Well, but think about this, and yeah, I'm not trying I mean, to make I'm, a case I'm, for that. Or, but just think about the, the fact that. It changes every single number on that confiscation, compensation mm -hmm. schedule the exact same by whatever it is, 45 or 50 cents. So next year, we don't have to say, well, you know, now they're starting to get too close or too spread out. You know, it's the exact same distance, the same mm -hmm. steps and same changes in steps. It's just 50 percent higher or 50 <sighs> cents higher. I can just see the personnel committee getting so mad at us. They will. Well, it's us. not it's not worth. We're on camera. And I'll tell you, I spoke to every <laughs> member of that personnel board, and they do not recommend what they recommended. Well, but why I'm would sorry. they do something why like that? Why would they then? send us a memo saying they recommend the step? Because they were pressured into uh, that. No, to Trevor was at the meetings. You were not. You didn't feel well, I wasn't at every meeting, but I was at the last meeting. It didn't seem pressure to me, but I, they they feel I'm that confused. way. Confused. I'm yeah. Well, they should not. They, they should, should feel. 
I'm empowered to say what they believe. I, I understand They certainly that. let us know but, when but, we're messing around. Because I can't I, I figure this out on my own. I understand, but I, I'm, I'm just telling you that some personalities don't do well when there's a stronger personality around them. Okay. And they feel oh, that they you need were a strong to... personality. No, <laughs> me, I don't think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just a I messenger hear you. here. That's but fine. I, I, and, and so, you're right that, you know, in the past, the personnel board, you know, all the things that you said about them being upset because we mm -hmm. changed and, and we felt yeah. that we had to to get these people. And, and all of that is true. And, and that's part well, that's of makes what makes this I'm job difficult. About. But, you, you know, through all of this, it's hard because unlike the real world, we have to look out to protect our employees and give them the benefits that they work hard for. Absolutely. But we also have to watch out for the people that Always. are paying this. I, and, absolutely. And I don't feel well, bad. Well, it's part of being And I just want it to be fair I, I mean, across I our employees, from but, our teachers straight on through. Right. Well, and I don't want no. these guys, just because we have access, you know, we have more control over their pay for 20 people than the other 80. I don't want to just go, ah, I got no control over that. Well, I, Here's I, where I'm going to, I want I it to be fair. I don't want to do that. You know, if I don't know when those cycles come up, but I'm going to be a big proponent to have, you know, hire somebody that's really good at this and make it fair. I mean, some of the, the, the contracts aren't fair, you know? I, at least I, I don't think they are. And I think that, uh, and I was involved, so I can't really I know. point fingers. Yep. Uh, but the few things that I have seen have, have just not been very fair. It's been kind of one-sided. And you're right, they do run away with some of the things. And, you know, I, if there's teachers working, they're going to say, oh, you don't know, no, no. And it, it's, it's tough. We all want to make money, but mm -hmm. we do have to balance it between providing a service for the people um, mm -hmm. and the um, and people that provide the service on both ends, the, the providers and the re recipients. I guess that's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. So um, I would propose 50 cents. I would, I would wait. I, don't okay. want to talk, I just want to talk to somebody a, couple, a little bit longer. Okay. I mean, okay. we don't have to decide this today. Nope. I know nope. there's pressure well, to get this well, decided today. Well, we're meeting today. next Wednesday. We're, we're going to meet next, next Wednesday. Wednesday. So if I could see how that plan, because that's a new thought to me, yeah, well, plays about. out. Yep. Well, I, it's I, worth, I, I'd I love feel to like we have to, to that. we have to make an effort to keep our compensation yes, schedule. That's been my biggest and struggle. That, that's what I'm yeah. worried about. And that's it's, why I'm worried that if... If we go too low, then what happens is uh, the one, a lot of our employees are, are higher up or at step 10. So, you know, this, they only are not, they're not going to get a step. And we, we, uh, retention is really important. It is. I, the I mean, I'm sorry. Of, and, uh, the you know, we're not, we we're not going here. to get very far ahead if we have brand new employees all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and we know that. We already know that that's we true. I understand that. But I, mm -hmm. I, I, don't feel, I, I don't feel bad because I, I think that the, our employees work hard for it, and I think that they're compensated well. And a, a big part of this that we really need to take into this equation is the benefits they get, not just their pay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's huge. I know. We, there's a lot of people that work well, hard the, for a living, and they have, they have to pay half the, of their insurance. The other issue is the insurance is going up a lot this this year, and and a, whatever we do here is going to get eaten up by that as well. It, so, well, it, but it's going to cost the taxpayers more it because is. we pay sixty five percent of the course. insurance anyway. I, so. I, I yeah, know, but I'm just saying it's but it's the increase gonna be the insurance is still. It's, but that's why it's important to have you know the copays and all that not, stuff yep, is yep, going to yep. be hard for them. Okay. So. It is important that we compensate. So, as much as I would love to take a vote tonight, I do want to think about no, this I, new. I, I think you should. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure that our we have some ability to give some kind of cola because we haven't given a cola since 2009. And that's true. But if you remember last year, <clears throat> that when we changed that whole compensation compensation schedule, there was a. a, a all the numbers were skewed up. Yeah, we never them pushed anyone so backwards. It was kind of like I don't want to say a double race because that's not accurate. No, because but it nobody was a, a went larger, up. A larger portion because they got a step, and the, and whatever and benefit whatever they adjustment. To, adjustment was for that thing. So you know they did better than a step. The majority of them. Yep. Okay. So are we going to vote to go into executive session then? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. We do that then so that we just deal with that real estate and then we'll be done? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think, do you want to read this? Oh, okay. Um, I declare and move that the select board go into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, and value of real property before, because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position. I need a second. Second. Okay. Um, I vote Carolyn Ness. Yes. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Henry Kamosa. We'll, okay. We'll only... Um, and we will not come back into open session, so... so. 